sixth game of the season made his first error of the year and only the sixth in his 11 year big league career and it would cost him. But Yasmani Grandal the former Padre even the score in the third with his seventh home run of the year. Meanwhile in an old fashioned pitcher's duel Ian Kennedy winless in his last 12 starts against the Dodgers pitched his best game of the year keeping them off balance all night long. The game boiled down to one pitch with two out in the bottom of the eighth. On a full count, Justin Upton, a 391 lifetime hitter against Cranky, hit a hanging slider deep into the San Diego Saturday night, setting up this Sunday afternoon rubber game of this three game series. It's a beautiful day for baseball and live from Petco Park in San Diego Sportsnet LA presents the Los Angeles Dodgers and the San Diego Padres 62 down 100 games to play. Hi again everybody Charlie Steiner Oral Hershiser and Nomar Garcia power. Mike Bolsinger is making his eighth start of the season a record of four and one a 2.08 ERA. Thinking back to March Bolsinger was basically an afterthought. He was a seat filler, hoping to get a shot, and he has been terrific since he's gotten his he shot. He really has been the diamond in the rough, the free-spirited Mike Bolsinger, the guy who's always smiling and happy to be up here, has really just dominated his opponents with the breaking ball. And I think the true test is going to be the second time he faces a team such as the Padres. We know the breaking ball's coming at you. He tells you he's going to be throwing it. It has different breaks. It has a 12 to 6 break. It has a sweeping break. And that pitch definitely needs to be on for him to be successful. So Bolsinger goes against Shane Shields today. Catching Bolsinger will be Yasmani Grandal. What a pleasant surprise he's turned out to be for the Dodgers. In the offseason, the Dodgers were looking for a little more pop behind Behind the plate, a look, a guy that can play defense like A.J. Ellis, and I think they have found him. This last week, he has been very hot. 308, a couple of solo shots, a double. The bat is starting to heat up. But the most impressive thing to me has been the defense behind the plate. Throwing out would-be base runners at a clip of 32%. The blocking of the ball, the calling of the game. Ushering the four and five slots in the Dodger rotation through the lineups has been outstanding. His fingers have been very smart. Mike Bolsinger goes for the Dodgers this afternoon. Big game James Shields for the Padres. We'll be back with the lineups in first pitch from Petco right after this.
second start of the season. Our closed captioning this afternoon is brought to you by Papa John's. Better ingredients, better pizza. So it's the rubber game of this three-game set, and as play begins today, the Dodgers two and a half in front of the Giants. They are hosting the Diamondbacks this afternoon. Ruby De La Rosa and Chris Heston up there. Dodgers five over San Diego, six and a half over the D-backs, eight and a half over Colorado. And here's the lineup that Don Mattingly has put together. Most noteworthy is that Justin Turner will have the day off. Peterson and Puig and Gonzalez. Adrian's been struggling. Kendrick, Randall, and Ethier, and Ethier's been hot. Rollins below 200. Kiasco making his seventh start of the year. Mike Bolsinger pitching and batting ninth. And now to the big game, James Shields, 33. 14 starts, 7-0 at a 379 ERA. Well, James Shields comes at you with a fastball that hovers around 92 miles an hour, but when he rears back, he can get it up to the mid-90s. We'll mix in an occasional cutter, but his big swing and miss pitches are his curveball and his changeup. So the key is try to set your sights up in the zone because when they're down, it's just the bottom, the bottom falls right out of it. He does a good job making every single pitch look like his fastball. In his 10th big league season, Oral, he's never set foot on the DL. He is very much a dominant pitcher on the mound and a dominant pitcher as far as taking the hill. And what I love about James Shields is he understands the whole team chemistry. Even though he is a once-every-fifth-day pitcher, He's the one that brought the Joe Madden tradition of celebrating a win to the San Diego Padres. He has really started to change this ball club's outlook on how to win. He's pitching on four days rest today. In his career, on four days rest, he is 80 and 40. On five days rest, he is three games under 500. What does that tell you? Well, I think he likes the rhythm, and he's such a gamer. The feel for the changeup is probably there when he stays on the mound as often as possible and gets those reps. Shields lives in Rancho Santa Fe. Went to high school, Hart High School in Santa Clarita. He has come home to Southern California. And Shields, the only pitcher at 7-0 and in the major leagues this year. He has given up 15 home runs, however. And Jock Peterson, who has hit 17, leads it off and takes outside and low. One ball and no strikes. Partly cloudy skies, 64 degrees. Ideal baseball conditions. Peterson and Puig and Gonzalez to hit here in the first. And the Padres have the big shift on for Jock Peterson, who fouls it back. And it's one ball and one strike. Didn't take Jock very long to uh, get loosened up right there. That full swing you actually saw, if you're James Shields, you saw Jock's numbers on the fall through. Peterson in a slump lately. Three for his last 26. Two balls and a strike. Padres with the win last night have won 7 of 11. The Dodgers' four-game winning streak came to an end. Dodgers even so have won five of their last seven. Mattingly's crew boards the charter immediately after the game. We'll get into... Dallas-Fort Worth sometime after midnight central time and play the Rangers. We'll be back with you tomorrow with Carlos Frias facing Giovanni Gallardo. And then on Tuesday, Brett Anderson and Chichi Gonzalez. Gonzalez has been quite something. Is an ERA of under a half a run. Now the 2-2. Three balls and two strikes. Players a lot of times trying to remove the individual game pressure by saying, well, we're just trying to win the series. Well, this individual game is to win the series. Dodgers this year, 11-5-3 and three in series play. 3-2, three and two, Peterson with 41 walks on the year. Now make it 42. <laughs> Defensively behind Shields... In the outfield, Upton, Will Venable's been terrific, and Matt Kemp been right. Upton, of course, the big home run last night. Solarte at third, Amarista at short. Spangenberg is at second base, Yonder Alonso at first. Will Myers the day off, and Derek Norris behind the plate. Now here's Yasiel Puig. Puig last night was two for four. He relentlessly beats himself up with a bat as he steps into the batter's box. I mean, it's not just a tap. No. 
That is no love down. <laughs> Fouls it off to the right. That is nothing in one. Gonzalez on deck. James Shields, since his first full season in the majors, 2007, has thrown 1,866 innings. He is an inning and two-thirds behind Felix Hernandez for the most innings pitched. Since 07. In the hole, it's short. Amarisa, there's one. Oh, on the first, not going to be in time. So Puig replaces Peterson at first with one out, and Adrian Gonzalez coming up. <laughs> Gonzalez has been struggling lately. He's three for his last 26. Of course, he had that great month of April when he hit 383. Eight home runs, 19 runs batted in. In the last six weeks since the beginning of May, Gonzalez hitting 270 with just three home runs and 21 runs batted in. And he takes under the knees and outside. One ball, no strikes. Has fared well historically against Shields and the Padres. Adrian last night was 0 for 4. To first. There's one. And there's two. Adrian Gonzalez has bounced into four double plays in the last two games plus. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. Mike Bolsinger ready to take the mound for the Dodgers. Venable, Solarte, and Upton coming up. His club 32 up, 32 down, 16 and 16 at home, 16 and 16 on the road. And here is the lineup he has constructed for this afternoon with Venable and Solarte at third base. It'll be Upton, Kemp, and Alonzo in the middle of the lineup. Derek Norris having a sensational season. 39 runs batted in, more than any other catcher in the National League. Spangenberg, the speeds are at second base. Amarist is at short. Shields pitching. And batting ninth and 27-year-old Mike Bolsinger making his eighth start of the year. A record of 4-1, and one, a shade over 2 for an ERA. It's not a day for Mike Bolsinger to be logical. Logically, with an ERA over 4 coming into this year, now at 2.08, it's probably my bubble might burst. Logically, pitching against James Shield doesn't look like a good matchup for him. But Mike Bolsinger's the kind of guy that can stay in his zone, forget about what's happened, what's going on around him, stick with throwing the curveball, locating it, and make sure the league doesn't catch up to his sequencing. Four starts ago at Dodger Stadium on May 23rd, he gave up a leadoff hit to Solarte. Spangenberg would bounce into a double play, and then he retired everybody. Oh! 
And a call strike, nothing in one. Will Venable at 264 with five home runs and 17 runs batted in. Takes high. So as a hitter, Nomar, you watch this guy, Bolsinger, who this is the year that he has finally emerged as a major league starter. Howie Kendrick, a couple of steps to his left. What do you do to, as you step in the box, what do you expect, what do you see? Well, I can understand the first time you face him, you're not, you know he's going to throw a lot of breaking balls. You have that scouting report, but you also want, it's one thing to read that he throws a lot of them, but the other thing is to see it yourself and see what type of break. And one thing he does well is he varies his types of breaks. One time a curveball can be kind of a 12 to 6 break. One could be a little bit more sweeping. He'll mix in the slider as well. But after facing him one time, I would think I can actually look curveball and adjust fastball rather than the other way around looking fastball and adjust curveball. Solarte takes inside. One ball, no strikes. Jan Hervis Solarte, 251 with a couple of home runs and 26 runs batted in. Came over from the Yankees in the Chase Headley deal. Solarte, an outstanding utility player. Starts at first, starts at third. A little bit at second base as well as Bolsinger misses high, 2 and 0. Oh. And in throwing a curveball, Oral, what is it that you do with your fingers, your wrist, or whatever it may be that makes it as successful as it has been for Bolsinger, who falls behind 3 and 0 oh to Solarte? Well, the key for his curveball is to get his fingers to the front of the ball. A lot of people think that you spin the ball right at the very end, but really you get your fingers to the front as early as possible. Four pitch walk to Salarte. So he has had very good hand discipline throughout this year so far, and they've only made one real adjustment. He was up a little bit with his pitches a couple starts ago, Rick Honeycutt, and he worked hard on staying back over the rubber so that his arm could work out in front. He'd have more whip, and that really brought his pitches down. So now Justin Upton, last night's home run hitting hero for the Padres. A 3-2 slider off Granky in the eighth, giving the Padres that 2-1 win. Upton's 13th home run of the year. He's knocked in 39. Hey, and he's just been terrific since coming to San Diego. And Bolsinger missing outside. One ball, no strikes. On three and two in the eighth. After a 3-1 slider that was outstanding out on the black, looking like he might pitch around Upton because of the average, and Matt Kemp in the on-deck circle with only two home runs this year. He tried to pitch around him, but the slider backed up on him. Now, wouldn't you know it, Upton's home run last night. His last home run came 19 games ago, and it was a grand slam against Carlos Frias back at Dodger Stadium. Petco Park's not supposed to be a hitter's park. Ten of Upton's 13 home runs this year have come here, only three away. And 12 of his 13 home runs have come against right-handed pitching. Well, that was one of the main reasons why they went out and got Upton here. They want they changed this whole lineup. They were looking for more run production, looking for more power, and trying to get the power where hitters were. They don't mind the dimensions here where they felt like they hit it a long way. It doesn't matter what park they're in. They're out of here. Now, Bolsinger having difficulty finding the plate. Now, right now, it looks like he's trying to make the perfect pitch instead of just throwing strikes on either half of the plate. Even that fastball that he got called for a strike looked to me slightly outside. A little more aggressiveness mentally. Keeping the ball down, throwing to halves of the plate. Now three and one. The fastball away, the cutter away to the right-hander is going to be a good pitch for him today if he can hit that corner because this park plays so big, you want the ball hit from gap to gap up the middle. You don't want these hitters to be able to pull the ball. Three and one. Solarde's got decent speed, but a short lead being held on by Gonzalez. And there's a strike. It's three and two. That looked like a strike, but it seemed inside to Justin Upton because of all the balls that had been away. So that's a tough look for a hitter when you've lived at one edge of the plate, and then in a hitter's count, you're able to hit the other edge. So now on three and two, 
Upton strikes out a fair amount, 66 times. Are the Padres inclined to send Salarte with the full count? Well, don't be surprised if you see a 3 2 slider or a 3 2 curveball. Mike Bolsinger not afraid to do that. The league is only hitting 111 off of him with two strikes. On three and two, swung on, and he just gets a piece of it. Solarte was not going. That's an outstanding 3 2 pitch right there. I mean, you could throw that one 0 oh, 2, 1 2, any count that you really wanted to. You don't want that one fouled off if you're Mike Bolsinger. Now you make me throw another one. Upton 275 against the Dodgers this year with five home runs and 15 runs batted in. So five of his 13 home runs have come against the Dodgers. Ball strike three. Oh. That was filthy. Well, that was. That's, that's, that's what Bull Singer does yeah. right there. I mean, that's a perfect. His, those last two pitches, as we talked about him pitching backwards. When you're, you're in a 3 2 count as a hitter, you're thinking, okay, he's going to want to come with his fastball. He doesn't want to walk me. He just walked the batter right before me. So, okay, he throws a breaking ball. I was able to foul that off. And now he has to come with a fastball. Well, that one started off. It came out of his, his, his hand up in the high zone. It was a ball coming out of his hand. You're thinking fastball, so you don't swing at it thinking you're going to walk. And he's. Backs it up with another breaking ball and it falls in for a strike. That was the do drop in. <laughs> and did you notice that was a different break? We talked about that. That wasn't a big break compared to the pitch before. That one a is slider. Yeah. Now here's Kemp, 246. Fouls it off to the right. That is nothing in one. Oro, as a pitcher, I, I know you weren't afraid to throw a breaking ball with two strikes, but. Wasn't there usually one breaking ball you would go to more with two strikes than another? I mean, he's through yeah. he's showing both curveball and a slider. Right. The command breaking ball is usually the slider for when you're either behind, you want to get back into a count. But he's had such good feel with his curveball, he can go with either. Kemp with but two home runs this year. Takes outside. He got that pitch once so far in this inning. In the first at bat against. Salarte, I'm sorry, against Venable, and he hasn't been able to get that outside call right now again for from Adrian Johnson. Kemp on the year has struck out 61 times in 248 at bats, and he takes a strike. It's one and two. Here's the breaking ball in the one-one count right here. This is the curve ball. Just drops it in there, get himself a routine strike. Cardinal sin for Mike Bolsinger is to leave his fastball somewhere near the middle of the plate. That's why we're watching him work the edges and try to hit the corner with the straight ones. Breaking ball, fly ball. Peterson's got a long way to go, and he tracks it down. What a play by Jock Peterson. Explosive first step. If he doesn't get there, it's a double and maybe a triple. So Jock Peterson robs Kemp with a brilliant play to end the bottom half of the first. Miles to go before he slept.
Old expression, better to be lucky than good, but when you're good and you're lucky, that's how you get a 7-0 record. Run support this year, 7 and a quarter per game. Ian Kennedy, last night's winner, has fared well. Only Andrew Kashner hasn't gotten the run support that the other fellows have. So Howie Kendrick leads off for the Dodgers in the second inning. And Shields delivers outside and low, one ball and no strikes. Kendrick at 288 with six home runs and 28 runs batted in. Fouls it off to the right. Shields in 81 innings. He's given up less than a hit per inning. 77 hits and 81 innings pitched. 22 walks, 98 strikeouts. And Kendrick fouls it off to the right. You know how Kendrick hits very few long fly balls, hits a lot of ground balls, and a lot of line drives. The outfield defense for the Padres shows that. They're really giving in to the, line, the long fly ball. I mean, very shallow trying to take away the line drive. Kendrick down on strikes, first of the game for Shields. Now Yasmani Grandal. With seven home runs and 22 runs batted in. Launched one down the right field line last night. Eighth year is on deck, scoreless, just underway, one out top half of the second. Shields is mixing it up here early. First pitch changeup. We saw that last night from Ian Kennedy to Osmani in about his third at bat. A guy that they know very well, of course, played here in San Diego where the Dodgers got him from. And James Shield wasn't his teammate. But James knows the scouting report that he's an excellent first pitch fastball hitter. Grandall 285 from the left hand side. Two and one. Now Zmani starting to heat up in the last week, hitting 308. A couple of home runs. Those stats aren't on your board. You see, that's the left right, right breakdown with the two home runs and a double in this last week. Only two RBIs, kind of evident that the Dodgers aren't getting a lot of guys on base. Hitting in that five hole, you would think with two home runs and a double, Nomar, that he would be bringing some guys across the plate. No, one of the problems has been that Gonzalez has yep. slumped so badly. Adrian is now three for his last 27. Well hit to center field. Venable's going a long way back, and he's going to track it down. A step or two in front of the warning track. His money, Grandal, gets that off the end of the bat just a hair. And we always talk about this game being a game of inches and the difference of, you know, getting that more on the barrel. That's definitely out of the ballpark compared to just floating up there and allowing Venable to get under it. And so with two out. Here is Andre Ethier. He's in the top 10 offensively among National League outfielders in all the important categories batting average home runs RBIs on base percentage. And he takes outside and low one ball and no strikes. Sporting the shades today with a little glare. Haven't seen Andre wear those very much. Rollins on deck. Okay. Did you uh, use sunglasses when you batted? Uh, no, I, and I didn't wear, I didn't use sunglasses when I was on the field either. I used the flip downs. For me, um, when I'd wear sunglasses, my depth perception was off, so. Gosh, I really didn't need to have that off when I was hitting. Although there were times when I was in a slump, I probably didn't need it. <laughs> that wasn't off. Ethier continues his hot hitting. And that's going to roll to the wall. And Ethier may uh, uh, be on his way to third base. And he will. For Andre Ethier, that's his fourth triple of the year. Once it split the seam into the deepest part of the ballpark, 
Ethier stands up at third with a triple. Well, he stays on this pitch. You see that? It was on the outer half. It was a breaking ball. But he doesn't pull off with that front shoulder. His, his bat stays through the hitting zone long enough and have enough power, and that's when he's staying on it, to be able to drive that ball to right center. And it was even deceiving to the, the outfielders because of the angles they took on that ball. They thought they were going to be able to cut it off, but it kept going. Now Jimmy Rollins squares the punt and takes it back. Rollins at 197. The triple by Ethier. He's one behind Ben Revere of the Phillies. Real Muto has four for the Marlins. Dexter Fowler has four for the Cubs. And now Andre Ethier with his fourth triple of the year. Rollins has really been struggling. Last night, 0 for 3. 0 for 4 on Friday night. One and two. But he has fared well against Shields in 14 career at bats. Kayaspo on deck. Center fielder Venable is very shallow, and so too is Upton in left. Kemp straight away in right. On one and two. Rollins down on strikes, and Jimmy Rollins continues to struggle. Two out triple for Eve here. That's that in the top of the second. Mike Bolsinger will be facing Alonzo Norris and Spangenberg when we come back. Win is pitching on this Sunday and is a very special day, Alana. Well, it was actually for him yesterday, Charlie, as he and his girlfriend got engaged yesterday. Lauren, his girlfriend, is on the trip. She's from Texas, as where Mike is from as well. And he, she said yesterday that he said, you know what, we should really go to the beach. And she's like, why? It's so cloudy. He's like, trust me, we need to go to the beach. So they took the ferry over to Coronado. He proposed in front of the hotel Coronado. And true to form, so calm, cool, and collected, he just basically handed her the ring. And she's like, well, wait. And he actually forgot to ask the question guys he forgot <laughs> to ask her to marry him of course she said yes very excited a big personal day for Mike Bolsinger and his future bride the self-described crafty right-hander gives the ring and forgets the proposal part <laughs> congratulations to Mike yonder Alonzo takes a ball outside one ball no strikes I mean with his personality I'm surprised he didn't put it at the bottom of a Cracker Jack box <laughs> Norris and Spangenberg to follow. Alonzo at 331 and his average just went up a tick. A leadoff single here in the second. First hit of the game for the Padres.
And here comes Derek Norris. He's faced the Dodgers in 12 games over the course of his career. He's a 311 hitter. Leads all National League catchers with 39 runs batted in. Runner goes. Grandal's throw, and he has got him. Alonzo with a late start. And Grandal with a perfect throw, throwing out his ninth would be base dealer of the year. Home run yesterday from Yasmani. The Dodgers only run, but the defense is the specialty when you're a catcher. You can't let your bat and take it behind the plate. Yasmani now throwing over 32% of would be base stealers out right there on the button. They tried to go first move on Bullswinger. Yasmani gunned him down. So Grandal has thrown out 9 of 30 this year. No balls and two strikes to Norris. The Padres have stolen 43 bases this year. That was the 10th time they were caught. As Bolsinger misses away. The most stolen bases Alonzo's ever had in a year was six, so kind of a surprise. And Dodgers could care less. Bolsinger strikes out his second. Norris is done, two out, and nobody on here in the bottom of the second. You know, Norm, when you've got to hit a curveball and a slider from a guy who really carries both of them, a lot of pitchers have a good curveball or a good slider on a day. He's had both on his days. Yeah, the, the tough thing about that is you're trying to you're trying to get that release point. You're trying to set your sights as a hitter. Say, okay, I know there's a break. I know what the curveball break is. So where am I going to look when he releases the ball? And then all of a sudden, it's a totally different release or totally different release you're looking for when it comes to the slider. And that's what can keep you off balance and get the swings and misses. Spengenberg takes a strike. Nothing in one. So, so far for Bolsinger. Two strikeouts and a walk. 25 pitches and 14 of them have been for strikes. Spangenberg's got a couple of home runs. And he bangs a base hit into right field. Takes a big turn and does not test the arm of Pui. Second hit of the inning. The Dodgers fortunate that Alonzo tried to steal a base but was caught. The thing you notice about this inning is both hits that Mike Bolsinger has given up are on bad fastballs. And that's what he needs to avoid to keep his run going. That 2.08 ERA that he came into this game is built on using the fastball just as a show pitch. And then using that at 79 mile an hour breaking ball right there. And then also his slider to really pitch with. Alexi Amarista, a home run 13, runs batted in. Shields not a bad hitting pitcher on deck. Dodgers began the day two and a half in front of the Giants. They're playing in the top of the third at AT&T Park. And Arizona with Ruby De La Rosa on the hill has a one to nothing lead. Oh and one. Wide of third in the left. A base hit. Kiaspo was in, and so once it got past him, it was an easy hit. Well, Amarista sees the breaking ball, stays back on it. When you're practicing as a hitter, you're always saying, okay, breaking ball, do you want to pull that? You're saying when you're working in the batting cage, you're thinking about trying to go the other way on a breaking ball, on that curveball. Well, Amarista takes that batting cage approach and executes it perfectly going the other way. So first and second, two out. And here's Shields, five out of 30. One of his five hits a double. So the second inning has been an adventure for Bolsinger, who delivers a strike, and it's nothing in one.
The rubber game of this three game set. This is the 20th series of the season for the Dodgers. Slow roller to third. Kiaspo picks it up and throws out Shields. The inning is over. No runs, three hits, and two left. Kiaspo will lead it off for the Dodgers, then Bolsinger and Peterson when we come back for the third. July when the Dodgers host the Mets stay after the game to see the sky light up with a spectacular 4th of July fireworks show presented by Cirque du Soleil's Curious. For more information go to Dodgers.com slash promotions. Dodgers looking for some fireworks of their own held to just one run in five hits. Last night Padres won it two to one. And it'll be Kiaspo and Bolsinger and Peterson to bat in the third against James Shields, who threw two innings, 30 pitches, 19 for strikes. Correction, 26 pitches and 15 for strikes. Ethier, the only hit for the Dodgers to this point, a two out triple. Now here's Kiaspo making his seventh start with the Dodgers and since coming to the Dodgers. He's eight for 30, 267. And he takes a strike and it's nothing in one. Overall, as you saw, he's hitting 219, wasn't hitting much in Atlanta. That's well hit to right center. And Kayaspo, high off the wall, will arrive at second base with a double. Alberto Kiaspo's second two base hit with the Dodgers. And his fourth on the year. He gets a ball right down the middle, drives it to right center. I think for a second, Kiaspo thought this might have a chance, and it definitely did. It hits off the top of the wall, stays in for an easy double. He's really waking up from the left side when he became a Dodger. He was down in the low 100s from the left side, but a lot of his hits as a Dodger have now come from that side of the plate. His ninth with the Dodgers. And Bolsinger bunts it into the air. Mike just didn't get the angle of the bat properly right there. He squared around early, got a good vision on the ball, but the, bat, the barrel of the bat gets a little loose on him. And he goes to get it down. He just drops the barrel. You see the barrel below the hands right there, and he kind of keeps it there. You'd like to see that barrel up a little higher at the top of the strike zone with a slight angle up to it so that if visually you're slightly off, you still get the top of the baseball on the bunt. So Shields now faces Jock Peterson. 
Jock walked in his first at bat. 17 home runs, 33 runs batted in. And Peterson rifles a base hit into right. Kiaspo rounding third. He's on his way home. Kemp with the throw to the plate, and Kiaspo is out. Matt Kemp on the fly, his sixth outfield assist of the year. It took a perfect throw, and that's what Kemp gave. Well, Jock kills this ball. One hops right to Matt Kemp. Coming to his left, squared himself up really well. It's going to take a perfect throw to get him, and he gets the perfect throw. Norris puts the tag on Kiaspo. Lorenzo Bundy might second-guess himself right there because he'd have first and third with the heart of the order coming up. But the Dodgers trying to stretch the back of the envelope, and Shields cheers on the throw from Kemp. So now there's two out. So Kemp still has that great throwing arm. Now Puig with two out. Peterson was leaning. For Jock, looked like he was just trying to get the timing down, kind of get a kind of cheating, get a walking lead to get his momentum going to really get a good jump and got back in time. Puig bounced to short in his first at bat, and the Padres have a shift on the left side of the infield. The entire right side of the infield is open for Puig. You've got first baseman Alonzo holding the runner and nobody else. I would have never guessed the Yasiel Puig spray chart would have said dead pull hitter like this on the infield. I would have thought that he'd have enough balls on the right side that you'd need a fielder over there. Other than the first baseman on the line. Who's holding the runner? One ball and one strike to Puig. If I'm Yasiel, that would tell me they're going to pitch me hard in or soft over the middle and to away that I'm not going to see any fastballs away for strikes. And that's what I don't like about the shift sometimes is that it eliminates pitches to the pitcher. Puig with the six game hitting streak since coming off the DL. And prior to his time of the disabled list, Puig has uh, hit 13 of his last 14 games. That's a 426 clip. And at the moment, 358. Three home runs, eight runs batted in. And he grounds it right into the shift. The shortstop, Amarista. And a seven pitch inning for Shields despite giving up two hits. Dodgers leave one. No score as we go to the bottom of the third.
Dodge Challenger. With an EPA estimated 30 highway MPG, this car was made for driving in California. Visit Dodge.com today. The Midway. Here we are in downtown San Diego near the Gas Lamp District. And Will Venable. And Herbis Solarte and Justin Upton will bat for the Padres here in the third. Bolsinger's first pitch is a strike, nothing in one. The Princeton Tiger Venable bounced to second in his first at bat. Takes outside. One and one. So the Dodgers so far this afternoon in the first three innings have a single, a double, and a triple, and nothing on the scoreboard. A two out triple for Ethier in the second. A leadoff double for Kiaspo. And after Bolsinger failed to sacrifice him to third, Peterson, a line drive into right, and Matt Kemp would gun down Kiaspo at the plate. So the Dodgers have had their chances. So to the Padres who had three hits in the second inning and came up empty. Venable went around and he will now be tagged out to complete the strikeout. The third for Bolsinger. So Bolsinger has struck out three and walked one. The one was Solarte in his first plate appearance. Starting at third base today, Will Middlebrooks is off. Will Myers is off today as well. Interesting infield defense for Solarte. You've got Gonzalez just a couple of steps off the line at first. Kendrick swung way over. You've got Rollins about 10 or 12 steps from second. And Kiaspo way in at third. Which tells us what, if anything? Pull on the ground and protect for the bunt. One and one, the outfield shaded toward right. And Solarte fouls it up the first baseline. Go, go. And now with two strikes, Kiaspo can back up. And sometimes with two strikes, you'll even see the infield go to even more pull-oriented. Where Kiaspo goes over almost where the shortstop would play, and Jimmy would actually go to the other side, but they're not doing it here. On one and two. They don't have to. And that backswing got a piece of Grandal. The bat ended up hitting him. Looks like he's okay, but it looks like it gets his. It just gets his mask here. Watch the backswing right there. Yep, clips his mask. And catchers get hit more by the backswing when they have a guy on the mound that has a great off-speed pitch because you get more of those leaning forward, full extension kind of swings because the guy is fooled like Salarte there. So they have to release that one hand on the bat. And you get that one-handed backswing. And that goes a lot further than a two-handed backswing. Let's not forget that uh, Grandal was on the seven-day concussion DL just a couple of weeks back. When in successive innings, he took one to the mask, got a backswing, and the very next inning, a foul tip flush on the mask, and he would miss a week. Those kinds of injuries, of course, cost the career of now Cardinal manager Mike Matheny. Shot of Stan Conti right there. That'll wake him up as he's always on the prowl of what's going on with every player that's active out there in each individual play. But when the review that Charlie just gave us, that would put him even more on a watchful eye. Two balls and one strike to Upton, a called strikeout victim in his first at bat. Bolsinger has struck out four and walked one. 40 strikeouts on the season for Bolsinger in now 46 innings. Into center field, Peterson has an easy beat. 
And a one, two, three inning for Bolsinger. His first perfect inning. When we come back for the fourth, Adrian Gonzalez, Howie Kendrick, and Yasmani Grandal will be coming up. Every Sunday home game, the, the Padres wear their military camouflage as we honor the armed forces. Adrian Gonzalez to lead it off for the Dodgers here in the fourth inning. Bounced into a double play in his first at bat. He takes outside one ball and no strikes. Gonzalez in his last five at bats has bounced into three double plays. He takes outside. Adrian Mired now in a pretty bad slump. He's three for his last 27. Of course, he was. There was nobody better in the month of April than Gonzalez when he hit 383, eight home runs, 19 runs batted in. He drills one foul. But in the last six weeks, May and into the middle of June, from 383, his average down to 310. Last six weeks, he's hitting just 270 with three home runs. And more recently, three out of 27. So Gonzalez looking to turn it around with Kendrick and Grandall to follow here in the fourth. He'll happily take a walk. Second of the game given up by Shields. Kendrick a strikeout victim in his first at bat. Six home runs and 28 runs batted in. Hitless in four at bats last night. Nice backhanded stab by Norris. It saved 90 feet for the Padres right there. What a great pickup he has been for San Diego. Coming from Oakland, and of course the Dodgers were able to get Grandall from the Padres. Both are happy with their respective deals. One, six, three.
Uh, Carl's cam right here showing James Shield fielding his position. He throws like a little loop pass there, like you're timing a running back out of the backfield in an NFL game because he had plenty of time. The ball back at him, just timing throw to Amarista. Gonzalez not the speediest down there on front of Amarista, so they were able to turn two. Now the Dodgers have bounced into two double plays in the first four innings. Here's Grandal to fly to center in his first at bat. Takes a hook inside. Eighth year on deck. Arizona one nothing top of the fourth in San Francisco. Shields two and up. Coming into the game, we're talking about Shields and his seven and zero record. And he's got seven and a quarter runs to work with, and his fourteen starts. This is his fourteen. Nineteen ninety five, when the Dodgers no longer wanted to be on the team, and I had to go shopping somewhere else. I saw that the Cleveland Indians were averaging seven and a half runs a game. I said, I think I'll go pitch for them. <laughs> well, let's run down who those guys were that were giving you seven and a half runs per game. Well, Who's on that team? Kenny Lofton, Omar Vizquel, Jim Tomey, Albert Bell, Manny Ramirez, Paul Sorrento. Hey, I could have pitched on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was some team. Ooh. Alomar I mean, was behind the plate, batting ninth with 20 home runs. Sandy Al that, right. that ain't right. So first of all, you're getting the run support from that team, and then you're a pitcher, and you're like, okay, let me. Don't mind if they hit it on the ground up the middle. And yeah. you have Omar Vizquel and Robbie Alomar oh. up there, right? Yeah, go ahead. Well, we had See Carlos Bayarga that year. So it wasn't quite <laughs> okay. that easy. But still, Carlos drove in some runs, but I'll tell you what. <laughs> I said, I'm coming off a team that if I gave up zero. I win. I give up one, maybe win or no decision. Two, I got a chance. Three, I'm gonna, I'm in trouble. I'm gonna go play for seven and a half. And if you didn't get seven and a half, it was a bad day for them. Yeah. Oh, I loved it. When the night team. before I pitched, we only got two or three. <laughs> they were Here angry. Comes Twelve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were angry. Ethier tripled in his first at bat. His fourth. Three base hit of the year. One behind the league leader, Ben Revere. One ball, one strike. I think that was a year that there was never a time that I didn't mind trading an out for a run. <laughs> in the you National could do, League. Hey, you could do that for six innings and get away right. with it. In the National League, you're like, oh my gosh, leadoff double, I gotta hold this. No, just go ahead and score. I'm just getting outs. Into left field. Upton is there. And that's going to do it. No runs, no hits, two walks, and a man left after three and a half. Still no score from San Diego.
The College World Series well underway in Omaha, Nebraska. A lot of Dodger ties and Padres ties for that matter as far as the schools that are still remaining in the College World Series. You just look no further than the battery here today for the Dodgers. Mike Bolsinger pitched at Arkansas. Yasmani Grandal played at the University of Miami. Both of those schools will face each other in the loser bracket. Of course, the University of Florida killed Miami in the game and Paco Rodriguez went to UF. UF now plays Virginia in the College World Series. Yasmani Grandal and Yonder Alonzo for the Padres both played together at Miami. And Cal State Fullerton is in it. They're going up against Vanderbilt. Of course, Justin Turner and our own Tim Wallach, Cal State Fullerton alums, guys. And, of course, Grandal and Alonzo, who is on deck. Went to high school together, college together. Went to the Reds together and came to the Padres together. And now they are on the other side of the fence. Bolsinger, through three innings, has struck out four and walked one. No, Marge, you play in the World College World Series? I did. I was lucky enough to play over there in 1994. My alum, Bowling Green State University in Ohio, that baseball factory boy we never played. <laughs> never played there. That was such a good baseball school that our first games on a weekend always got snowed out. <laughs> We always started our se season the week after it said on the calendar that we were starting because the weather was so bad. And they removed all the, the seats, and you could say that you had another standing room only crowd. <laughs> the day that the Dodger cross checker came to watch me at Bowling Green, he unfortunately at the beginning of the game had to go to the bathroom, and the bathroom is out in the right field bleacher area. So he was walking from behind home plate where he was radar gunning and watching it was Dale McReynolds and the right this area scout was Boyd Bartley God rest his soul Dale McReynolds walked out to the right field bleacher area to go to the bathroom by the time he got back in the bottom of the first I was knocked out of the game <laughs> I think my draft round went down a little bit that's why I went the 17th round <laughs> that's your story and you're sticking to it. That's what Boyd told me after they they, they drafted me in the 17th round. If Oral, I really wanted you. I wanted you earlier, but I, you got that, knocked out of the gate too early when my cross-checker came. He couldn't get to see you. It was a long bathroom run, huh? <laughs> it was terrible. Camp on two and two. Okay, to put the bathroom behind home plate on, he got drafted that's, higher. That's what I was wondering. After, after you got drafted, after you made a little money, did you finally go back to the school and put a bathroom over there? Yeah, should have. <laughs> Fifth strikeout for Bolsinger. And Kemp has gone down for the 62nd time this year. They got him on a slider away, and the great play by Jock Peterson in the first at bat this time, and actually back up a little curveball or slider. It just fools Matt because it looks if it's a fastball at your hip, you got to do what he did, but it wasn't. It was a breaking ball that caught the inside corner. So Kemp with a great throw, gunning down Kiasco at the plate in the second inning. 0 for 2 offensively. And here is Yonder Alonso. Alonzo single to right in his first at bat. And a strike, one and one. I wonder if Mike Bolsinger proposed because A, he's in love, and B, he's on a hot streak. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, as a future husband, you want to have things together. You want to know you're going to have a secure job. You want to make sure that you're going to have enough money to buy a house and start a family. And since he's on a roll and doing so well, he might, like, you know what? I'm starting to feel secure in the big leagues. I think I can ask her to marry me. So no, Mark. You're, 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 go, you're going with that one, right? You're I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> I'm, you're, so you're I'm <laughs> starting to think, I'm thinking out loud a little bit. You are. Yeah. As a, yeah, you are. Yeah, you as, are. A, as a starting pitcher. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> you know, you, you know, you two are kind of ganging up on me right now. <laughs> no, you're uh, taking uh, it upon yourself. <laughs> all right. Next time Mike starts, we're going to talk about okay. this in the next four days, and I'm going to come back with information. Here's a two-two instead of speculation. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm here if you need me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Anytime you want to chime in, no more. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, Bolsinger. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. Six strikeouts now. <laughs> so we, if the league uh, continues to not look for his curveball, his favorite song is going to be Britney Spears' Oops, I Did It Again. <laughs> All right, I'm done for this wow. inning. You guys have the rest. <laughs> There's uh, nothing well, else to say. Let's just hope he proposed because obviously he loves her. Well, I thank goodness she said like, yes. Gosh darn. And right. go out there, keep throwing the curveball and keeping him off balance. There How's that? Go. Good. <laughs> that was enlightening. <laughs> Derek Norris, a strikeout victim in his first at bat. <laughs> Scoreless with two out in the bottom of the fourth. <laughs> this, of course, the rubber game of this three game set. The Dodgers. Under Don Mattingly, going back to 2011, are 54 and 31 against the Padres, and 26 and 16 here at Petco. And Bolsinger, one ball, two strikes, a fastball at 88, and that's about as hard as he can throw. You're not going to see a lot of fastballs that touch 90. If he really has one, it's going to be when the adrenaline's there. Mike pitches under control, and he's done a great job locating the breaking ball. Not just throwing it for strikes, but throwing it where he wants to. And he has struck out five of the last six batters he has faced. Striking out the side here in the fourth. He's got seven on the day. We go to the fifth, and there is no score. Sportsnet LA is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Taste the new black pepper cheeseburger today, only at Jack in the Box. On this beautiful Sunday afternoon in San Diego, scoreless as we go to the fifth, each team with three base hits. Last night, the two teams combined for three runs and 13 hits, and the, these are the kinds of games historically we have seen over the years between the Dodgers and the Padres pitchers duels and we certainly have one so far this afternoon Bolsinger struck out seven and walked one Shields has struck out two, walked two and Kai or rather uh, Rollins swings and misses nothing in one Kiaspo on deck and then Bolsinger Rollins with two out in the second inning after Ethier tripled had struck out and now he drills one into right field for a base hit. So Jimmy Rollins, that's the first real clean swing he's had in a while. Really solid hit. He stayed on that one. What I mean by that, that bat really stayed through the zone better on that fastball.
We're scoreless in San Francisco. Up the coast, Arizona has a one to nothing lead in the fifth inning against the Giants. Kiaspo narrowly missed a home run in his first at bat. He would settle for a double and eventually would be thrown out at the plate trying to score on a single by Jock Peterson. Kiaspo takes a strike. Yeah, I'm curious Jimmy Rollins over there at first base. We talked about how success off James Shields. He's been on base quite a bit against him. So now once again I wonder if he also knows his timing and we might be looking to try to steal. Derek Norris is throwing out 20 of 62. Numbers look like a misprint. That many throwouts and that many attempts. And all is said and done, he's thrown out a third of the would-be base deal. Well, with that many attempts, that means the San Diego pitching staff does not have very good times to the plate. Because the first thing that you look at if you're going to run is how quick is the pitcher to the plate. If he's 1-3 or under, you start to think no, unless you're the ultimate base dealer. When it's one above 1-3, one you're starting to think for sure you're going to go. And so to get that many attempts, they've been slow to the plate for him. Rollins has six of the team's 14 stolen bases. In the left center field, Upton is there. Caps it down. So with one out, Bolsinger coming up. Bolsinger attempting to sacrifice in his first at bat popped it into the air. Well, that's what he'll be doing here, trying to get the bunt down. See how aggressive the San Diego defense is. Jimmy Rollins will need to get a nice secondary lead, read the bunt on the ground, and get a good jump. Bolsinger's next base hit will be his first. 0 for 18. One ball and no strikes. Set the bat at the top of the strike zone. If the ball forces you to move the bat up, you take it. That's just what Mike Bolsinger did right there. Kiaspo not much of a threat to steal. Certainly not going to steal with Bolsinger up as he fouls it back. One ball, one strike. Jimmy Rollins at first base. Mentioning it, he's got six of the 14 stolen bases. The Dodgers with 14 stolen bases is the fewest in Major League Baseball. And when they try to steal, they don't do very well with that either. That is a good bunt. Olsinger gets the job done. Rollins advances to second, two out. Come on out to Dodger Stadium. Father's Day, a week from today, when the Dodgers face off against the rival Giants. The first 40,000 fans in attendance receive a Father's Day barbecue set presented by Farmer John. Bring your gloves and join in a post-game catch on the field. For more information, go to Dodgers.com slash promotions. With two out, here's Peterson. Peterson has walked and single to right. His single in the third inning. A one hopper to Matt Kemp. It was hit right on the button. And Kiaspo trying to score from second would be thrown out. Padres have had but one base runner in scoring position. And Norris and Shields in conversation that has just come to an end. Peterson with his hit in the third lifted his average to 251. 17 home runs and 33 runs batted in. Rollins still good speed at second. 
Now it's nothing and two. Jock Peterson third in the league in walks and second in the league having been struck out. 75 times. Meanwhile Shields has been most economical. Next pitch will be his 58. Hasn't thrown more than 16 pitches in any inning to this point. Into the midriff of Corey Spangenberg. Well, the Peterson's hit the ball on the screws twice today. Once a hit and once right at the second base. No runs, one hit, one left after four and a half. No score from San Diego. The fifth, Spangenberg, Amarista, and Shields against Mike Bolsinger, who has struck out seven and five of the last six hitters he's faced. So he continues his magic carpet ride. Spangenberg single to right in his first at bat. Kiaspo. In on the grass at third, takes a strike, and it's nothing in one. Top of the fifth in San Francisco, and the Diamondbacks lead the Giants three to nothing behind Ruby De La Rosa. Outside, one and one. In case you're wondering, at the moment, Bolsinger's ERA is 1.90. And a call strike, one and two. Who'd have thunk it? Career ERA over four coming into this year. Really just one of the placeholders that in an emergency would have been used by the Dodgers, but he has really taken advantage of that opportunity. I think it's a combination of a few things. I think it's uh, some mechanical work that he and Rick Honeycutt have done. I think it is some sabermetric analysis of what pitches are his most successful, and he's changed the ratio on that to more curveballs and actually brought the slider back into his arsenal that was actually taken away by an organization. Right to Rollins, but Spangenberg runs very quickly. 
one of the mechanical changes that Rick Honeycutt and Mike Bolsinger have done is that sometimes on his curveball and his fastball, he gets too far out in front. So back on April 23rd, you see the side step to the rubber there, and his center of gravity is in front of the rubber during the leg kick. Well, now they take the, le the step back, and they come straight back, get the center of gravity behind the rubber, now over the rubber at the top of the leg kick, and he has more leverage. It works his arm on out front, gives him better direction to the plate, and makes him more consistent. Rick Honeycutt with a lot of little tweaks like that. Rick has learned an awful lot from Sandy Koufax on how to leverage the ball back when we were active pitchers with the Dodgers, and then he has continued to pass on some of Sandy's nuggets to the active pitching staff. Now Amarista takes outside. What about Rick Honeycutt since 2006? The Dodgers have the lowest ERA in Major League Baseball, 366. Lowest opponent's batting average, 247, and the most strikeouts, 11,738. The numbers speak for themselves. There's nobody works harder than he and A.J. Ellis and now Yasmani Grandal and putting a game plan together. And there's a lot to be said to, to have that knowledge and that work ethic behind you because it gives you a lot of comfort when the fingers go down. And now on the mound, you can really just think about yourself and getting a rhythm and, and let the thinking be done by the, the catching core and the pitching coach. Amarista on two and two. Takes high and away three and two. Shields is on deck. Four hits for the Dodgers, three for the Padres. And Amarista in the left center. And Jock Peterson just covers a world of real estate out there. Two out. Speed can cover a bad route and a bad jump. And, and Jock broke in a little bit on this ball, but because of the wheels, he was able to catch up to it and get to it. I mean, he may take that first step like you mentioned, but then after that, the route is perfect. The angle is perfect, and that allows him to go out there as we have a look at the Morongo slow-mo cam and fields it cleanly. Looks nice in slow-mo. Yeah, he does. It's too easy, and it's not that easy. No, it's not. James Shields with two out and nobody up. Bounce to third in his first at-bat and takes outside and low one ball and no strikes. We were talking about that earlier in the press box dining room. No more remember the conversation about the speed of the game that really television sometimes hides it. How good these athletes are on this field. And just just the routine play is in, in the level. I mean the big league level compared to that college level compared to the high school level compared to I mean just it really is so high in the speed and these guys make it look just so easy. Red Barber used to call the broadcast booth the catbird seat. And we watch these plays unfold that you simply cannot capture on television because, again, we have a far more panoramic view than what you have on a screen. To the right side and a base hit for James Shields, a two out single to right. And so when you watch a play unfold like a, a Jock Peterson, and then you get a, some sense of how far he has to cover in such a short period of time and the ease with which he's able to do it he's special and it's even different up here in the booth compared to being down there even closer to the field i mean there are times we even we used to ask this for the scorekeeper you know some of the balls that he has to decide whether they're hit or an air especially based on how hard they're hit like if you're down on the field you have to you can judge it better on going wait that was a base hit because that was hit sharply Will Venable 0 for 2. He's bounced to second and has been struck out. His dad played in the major leagues primarily with the Giants. Max Venable. Got Hervis Solarte on deck. Scoreless. Two out. Bottom of the fifth. So Bolsinger in search of his fifth win of the year.
Seven strikeouts on the day. And a dive, and it's past Gonzalez in the right. And Shields is on his way to third, and he makes it. The throw kicks past. Kiaspo, but the runners stay put. It almost looked like Kiaspo didn't want that to deflect off his body, so kind of let it go, and he turned early to go back and get it. I don't know if I'm reading that right or not, but it was very odd to see the throw come in and for it to go go to the wall. You know, I'm wondering if Kiaspo was anticipating Jimmy Rollins possibly cutting the ball off. And that's why he wasn't able to get it. Watch Jimmy. It looked like he was going to catch it. And then he brings his glove down. And there. So Kayas was reading the runner as James Shields yeah. is coming and watching where that ball was going to bounce. It was in between. So he just he's, he's kind of caught in no man's land going, uh-oh, where's this ball going to go? And lucky for the Dodgers, it bounced right back at him. And it was surprising that Shields, the pitcher, was running on Puig with two out. Well, James Shields did take a risk there, already in scoring position. But Black not liking the call, and Adrian Johnson, the home plate umpire, not liking the reaction. And he was, he, it was uh, Mark Kotze over there, the hitting coach for the Padres, yelling at him over there. And Adrian Johnson, I think, just tossed him out of the game. Upset about and that ball hits the top of the strike zone. So indeed, cuts it. One ball and one strike to Salarte, who has walked and struck out. This last pitch was a strike, I thought, too. Maybe getting tossed out. <laughs> bought you one. Yes, that one got more of the plate than the pitch before. First and third, two out. This is the Padres' first threat of the day. The two out, Justin Upton on deck. Left-handed hitter, I know you don't have exactly what you want, but I think Mike Bolsinger needs to go right after him. Now it's one and two. Two fastballs, breaking ball that you get a foul ball on with a man on third and a tie game. You got to trust your catcher and you got to bounce this one if you're going to throw the breaking ball. You got to make sure that you get it down. You don't want to throw a strike breaking ball. You got to risk the wild pitch or the pass ball. Bolsinger, when he has two strikes on a hitter, collectively they're hitting 111 against him. And now it's two and two. As Venable swipes second. Well, they played defensive indifference. They did not even move from their positions up the middle. Jimmy Rollins or Howie Kendrick didn't go to guard second base. They're playing to get the hitter out. And Yasmani Grandal, everybody on the Dodger team knew that because Yasmani stayed in his haunches, did not even come up. So it's second and third with two out. Bolsinger trying to dig out of the first jam he's had all day. A two out single for Shields. Venable would single. Second and third, two out. The 2 2, high and away, three and two. Right before that pitch, Mike Bolsinger had to step off. Yasmani surprised him with the pitch call. He had to get back on the mound, take a deep breath, and clear the hard drive. And he saw a little extra effort on that curveball. It's the first time he's really come out of his delivery. Upton on deck. Three and two. Bolsinger deals. And the bases are loaded. Second walk given up by Bolsinger, both to Salarte. First time we've really seen the laid-back Mike Bolsinger show some emotion out there on the mound, a little disgust with himself. Rick Honeycutt noticed that as well. well. Oral, as a pitcher, you mentioned him coming out of his delivery a little bit on those last two pitches. Well, you have the bases loaded, man on third. Is it something you consider maybe going back to the windup to get back on track rather than pitching out of the stretch? He could right here because the man on second, you know, you'd like to go from the stretch to kind of hold him there. But with two outs, he's going to break on contact anyway. 
So pitching from the windup with two outs, bases loaded, compared to pitching from the windup with one out because you want to get a double play or no out, with two outs you can do it. The advantage really goes only to the runner on first as much as a double might score him now because you're in the windup. Well, the meeting on the mound is over. Justin Upton coming up. 0 for 2 this afternoon. Well, the pitch is escalating here with 24, but before that, very efficient. And it all began with an innocent two-out single to right by James Shields. Upped in the home run last night. A grand slam against the Dodgers this year. That was 20 games ago. And there's two gone. And a call strike, nothing and one. Justin Upton already has 15 runs batted in this season against the Dodgers. That's the most by a Padre since Chase Headley had 20 RBIs in 2012 for the entire season. Into center field for a base hit. Shields will score. Venables on his way home, and he will score. A two-out RBI single to center for Justin Upton. The Padres draw first blood, two to nothing, San Diego. Live by the curveball, die by the curveball, but the first one backed up on him a little bit. He got a called strike. Justin Upton got a read on the curveball from the first one, and he actually made a more hittable pitch on the second one, and Upton made him pay for it. With two out and nobody on, Shields single to right, Venable single to right, Solarte would walk, and Upton singles home two. So a two out rally and a two run lead for San Diego. First and second, and here's Kemp. Robbed of a hit by Peterson and struck out swinging. Bolsinger. It's come undone for him here in the fifth inning in a hurry. He's really got to blow his neck right now and get in the dugout down 2 nothing. It's still early in the game. and There's plenty of game left, but you can't let this inning unravel any further. Oh. There's a strike. One and one. J.P. Howell. Just now beginning to warm up. Chuck Krim, the bullpen coach, behind him. Kemp takes high. Two and one. This Padre rally came out of nowhere. Two out. Pitcher singles to right, opens the door, and now Bolsinger falls behind three and one. Yonder Alonso is on deck. Mike had a very nice feel for his breaking stuff before this inning, where he could throw it for a strike, then take it a little lower, then bounce it. Right now, He's only just able to throw it. And he's not real sure where it's going to go. And this is the 30th pitch of the inning. Did he go around? Nope. So the bases are loaded with two out. Five batters in a row have gotten on after two out. And Yonder Alonso with the bases loaded, the eighth batter of the inning. Grandall going out probably to buy some time and tap dance to give J.P. Howell a few more pitches to get warm. Howell left-hander, Alonso of course left-handed hitter. Adrian Johnson. Trying to break up the party. 
Rick Honeycutt on the phone, making sure that Hal is about ready. And for the moment, Mattingly remains in the dugout. But not anymore. They bought as much time as they could. Bolsinger, the first four and two thirds, couldn't have been any better. And Shields and Venable would single, Salarte would walk, Upton would drive in two, Kemp would walk, and now Mike Bolsinger walks dejectedly to the third base dugout. Base is loaded. Two out, two nothing. San Diego. We're in the bottom half of the fifth. JP Howell is on his way in. They bring you an inside look at the best moments of the week on and off the field. Don't miss Dodger Clubhouse tomorrow night at 9 right here on Sportsnet LA. So Mike Bolsinger and the Dodgers were taking a nice leisurely Sunday afternoon drive. And then they hit a pothole here in the bottom half of the fifth. Five batters in a row after two out and nobody on got aboard. A two out bases loaded single for Upton. J.P. Howell, his 24th appearance of the year, trying to replace the tire and limit the damage. Yonder Alonso, one for two. Howell delivers. High, one ball, no strikes. For Bolsinger, 58 pitches through four and 31 pitches here in the seventh. And most of them came after two out, nobody on. So Larte, Upton, and Kemp, third, second, and first. Slowly rolled up the first baseline. Gonzalez takes it. Howell limits the damage to two runs. Three hits, three left. We go to the sixth. And the Padres. Lead the Dodgers now 2 0.
Dodgers in the six, and one of the things that makes the Dodgers such a special organization. The iconic nature, the sociological import of this organization. People like Don Newcomb, who is turning 89 years young today. And what a gentleman and what a great man to be around. We absolutely love him, especially all the home games that he's down there at Dodger Stadium imparting his wisdom. 149 wins at the big league level, but we're all winners when we're around him. Of course, Jackie Robinson famously broke the color barrier in 1947. Roy Campanella in 1948. Nuke in 1949. And for many years, Nuke and Jackie Robinson were roommates. So Don Nukem, above and beyond a dear friend of all of ours. There's Jackie's number. Nobody will ever wear that one again in baseball. Is a seminal figure in, in American civil rights history, above and beyond being the great baseball star that Nuke was. Puig. One ball, one strike. And I think it's so important to have guys like Don Newcomb around, especially guys coming to new organization. I know for myself coming over coming over to the Dodgers and just you know, being a Dodger fan growing up, but also just the history and learning from guys like him. So important. I am old enough, admittedly, to have watched Newcomb pitch. Admittedly, I was a kid. Big, imposing right-hander. Fastball slider and could hit. Happy birthday, Nuke. We love you, and we look forward to seeing you next homestand. See you Wednesday. Those two balls and two strikes to Puig with Gonzalez and Kendrick to follow. Dodgers down a deuce. Big game James Shields to this point living up to his nickname. And a call strike three. Third strikeout of the game. First out of the sixth. How hard is it to hit a front door slider, Nomar? Very hard because it looks like a ball coming out of his hand. You're thinking it's going to be a fastball on the inner half, and you're not sure how far it's going to break. Is it going to break enough to catch the inner corner? And that ball does so. It's not only did it catch the inner corner, but it was also the bottom of the strike zone as well. Adrian Gonzalez looking for a hit. Has walked and bounced into a double play. Mariano Rivera thinks invented that kind of front door cutter slash slider as hitters started to lean out over the plate the right handers to hit the ball away and then he tried sometimes to throw a two seamer in there but then he found you know his cutter he had so much great accuracy back dooring it to lefties out there but he started throwing it inside to righties. Tell you right now with the Dodgers behind. One thing about James Shields, we know how good he is as a pitcher, but it's usually that third time around where teams get to him. I mean, they have a 366 average facing James Shields, but James Shields so far is looking pretty strong, especially trying to need that shutdown inning. Well, Gonzalez continues to struggle. He is three for his last 28. Last year, Adrian got off to a very hot start in 2014, hitting over 300, had eight home runs in March and April. But then he hit the skids in May and June, and really questioned himself and his ability, but then turned it back on. So he's used to running through these kind of cold spells. Kendrick with two out and nobody on. Swings and misses. And as Gonzalez and the Dodger offense is cooling off, James Shields is really heating up. Two out and nobody on. He's got four strikeouts on the day and a 2 0 lead to work with. Missing outside. Next pitch will be Shields 70th. 42 for strikes. Kendrick is struck out and. Bounced into a double play. Oh. 
Shields seems to have everything working today. One thing about Shields, I mean, when he gets that lead or he has that opportunity for that shutdown inning right after he gets the lead, he really just attacks, takes it to another level. Amarista throws out Kendrick. The Dodgers are done in the sixth. Norris, Spangenberg, and Amarista to bat as we go to the bottom of the sixth. In T Park here, the Padres lead the Dodgers two to nothing at Petco. From here, the Dodgers go to Texas, and the Dodger calendar brought to you by 76. We'll be back with you tomorrow at five o'clock when Frias and Gallardo have at it. Tuesday at five, Brett Anderson and Chichi Gonzalez and the Dodgers head right back and face the Rangers on Wednesday and Thursday nights, and the Giants are in over the weekend. J.P. Howell, who got out of that bases loaded jam in the fifth, begins the sixth, and he'll be facing Derek Norris and a couple of left-handers, Corey Spangenberg and Amarista. No balls, one strike to Norris, who has struck out twice this afternoon. So Kennedy and the Padres shut down the Dodgers 2-1 to one last night. And to this point, Shields and the Padres are shutting out the Dodgers this afternoon. Norris 0 and 2. Seven home runs and 39 runs batted in for Derek Norris. And a dozen games against the Dodgers, hitting over 300. Al misses outside. It's one and two. Al putting up good numbers this year for the Dodgers. The ERA about a half a run. Two and two. And with more lefties in the bullpen this year, we've had Paco Rodriguez down there. He's on the DL right now. Adam Libator. JP hasn't, he's having as many appearances as last year, but he's having less ups. And I think it's going to keep him fresher. We're not going to see him hit the skids at the end of the season like he did last year where he just looked worn out. Well, Daniel Colomb has been up a couple of times too. Mm -hmm. And Howell misses high, three and two. And JP just hit, hit the wall in September last year. 23 games so far this year 68 last year so on pace for maybe even a few more but just any time there was a possibility of needing a lefty last year JP was the guy who had to be up and I think a lot of those extra tosses caught up with him. Peterson is there.
the thing about J.P. Howell, and while this is his 27th appearance, he's only been pitching to a batter or two, so it's not been a lot of a lot of tosses. He is now with the two outs here, the last out in the fifth, the first out in the sixth, in 24 appearances, a total of 17 innings. Yeah, as compared to last year, it seemed like he would face at least three batters or so when he came in. Or go into a second inning mm -hmm. work. Spangenberg with a little number. Hal better hurry, and he goes. So quickly, two out, nobody on. Alexi Amarista coming up. Hal does a good job jumping off the mound to field this ground ball, recognizing Spangenberg has some speed. But when he did it, notice how he went down with that hand to kind of dip to make sure he got the ball. It wasn't just thinking, okay, assume that he was going to be able to pick it up easily with his hand. He almost dug that hand into the ground to make sure he got a good grip and a good throw. To get the speedy Spangenberg. Two out. Amarista single to left and fly to center. Squares to bunt and takes it back. Padres have won seven of their last 11. They've been right around 500 most of the year. They've never been more than five above and haven't been more than four below 500. And Hal has been busy this inning, but makes quick work of San Diego. Needed nine pitches to retire them in order. the top of the seventh inning as Monty Grandal, Andre Ethier, and Jimmy Rollins set to hit in this inning. Of course, much was made of the offseason trade between the Padres and the Dodgers involving Matt Kemp and Yasmani Grandal. If you take a look at them side by side, guys, in the 2015 comparison, with the exception of RBIs, Yasmani Grandal leads all offensive categories when you put those guys head to head. Of course, everyone says the best trade is the one that works out for both teams. I'd say that the Dodgers are certainly happy with what they've received in Yasmani Grandal. Who leads it off here in the seventh inning? Grandal has flied to center and has walked. The Dodgers certainly thrilled with their side of the deal. And of course, much was made of a crowded outfield, and now Kemp is in San Diego. Grandal with the home run last night, his seventh of the year. The other thing about Grandal, he has steadily improved blocking balls in the dirt. Takes the low and inside, two balls and no strike. He has thrown out eight of 29 would be base stealers. And certainly, uh, better than we saw the last couple of years when he was down here in San Diego. Two and one. 
And I think some of that has to do with the fact that he's, he's healthy this year, you know, dealing with a knee injury. And, and that catcher position can often alter your technique behind the plate. And he's been working hard with Steve Yeager and Rob Flippo, the bullpen catcher. Every day throwing balls in the dirt out. That must be a fun exercise. <laughs> Three and one, Ethier on deck, Rollins to follow. Shields and the Padres with a two nothing lead. Into left center field. Upton is there. So the Dodgers came close to a run back in the third inning, but Kiaspo would be thrown out at the plate on a great throw by Matt Kemp. And so Mattingly's crew looking to get. Some kind of offense going. Held to just one run in five hits last night, and that was the Grand Dahl home run. Ethier with a fly ball to right. Kemp is going back. He's at the wall, and it is into the jury box. A home run for Andre Ethier. His ninth home run of the year. And the Dodgers are back to within one. It is two to one. What a solid year Andre Ethier continues to have. Well, Andre had a good at first at bat where he hits the triple in the right center gap. And here he gets a pitch up in the zone. And he just puts a really good swing on this one. And drives it into that jury box as you mentioned, Charlie. That fastball guilty is charged. Now Rollins and the Dodgers are to within one. Nine home runs, 27 runs batted in for Ethier, who hit four home runs all of last year. You know, when Adrian Gonzalez came over from Boston and when he was in Boston, he wasn't completely healthy. It took him a while to get his front shoulder healthy. All of a sudden, what he learned from hitting hurt compared to what he was able to do once he got healthy, we saw the power come back. Andre Ethier is going through the same kind of year where he had to learn how to play while he was hurt and not fully healthy. He did that over the last couple of years. Now he is fully healthy, and we're seeing everything come back. The power, the average, the energy. And it's a lot easier to play when you're feeling good. Meeting with the approval of his boss, Mark McGuire. Hmm. Tell you what, when you're struggling, you get the, the calls don't go your way. When it seems like you're hot, those close ones go your way. Rollins hitting under 200. And Kiaspo takes outside 2 and 0. Oh. Kiaspo a double and fly to left. Seventh inning stretch at AT&T. And the Diamondbacks lead the Giants 4 0. Kiaspo lines one foul. One hop into the stands. Andre Ethier. Probably his best all-around season was 2009. He had 272, but with 31 home runs and 106 runs batted in. Kiaspa takes low. 2010, his average went up. His power went down. 292 with 23 home runs, 82 RBIs. 2012, 20 home runs, 89 runs batted in. A career 285 average. Iaspo takes a strike. And Ethier now at 295 with his nine home runs and 27 runs batted in. So 
a resurgent season season for him. Andre Ethier. Three and two to Kiaspo. Turner is in the on deck circle. Suggesting the end of the day for J.P. Howell. Adam Libitor warming in the Dodger pen. Three and two to Kiaspo. Down on strikes. At six strikeouts for Shields, who surrendered his 16th home run of the season. But almost all of them have been of the solo variety. But Ethier gets the Dodgers on the board. And we are at the seventh inning stretch. San Diego two. And the Dodgers one. As we head to the other half of the seventh inning stretch, James Shields' day is done. He went seven innings. He has not gone beyond seven innings this year. Melvin Upton Jr. will pinch hit as we begin, begin the bottom half of the seventh inning. J.P. Howell will remain at least for another batter or two. And the Dodgers have pulled to within one. So Shields' day complete. One run, five hits, the home run by Ethier. Walk three and struck out six. So now it's a battle of the bullpens, and the Dodgers are run down. I think I think they're pulling out. They might pull out JP Howell here. Nope, they're gonna keep him in. We're wondering if we're going to have him warm up and possibly bring in the right hander to face the pinch hitter once he's announced. Well, Libidor had been up. And Upton takes outside. And you've got Venable on deck, then the switch hitting Salarte. And Upton, who 
been on the DL and really hasn't hit a lick in a couple of years. Figure, all right, let's see what we can do with him first. But Hal falls behind 2 0. Upton began the year on the disabled list with a bad left foot. Two balls and one strike. JP trying to get the ball down right here. This being his third inning. I know it's not a total of three innings, but really the third warm up to come out. Not something he's used to. He might have a little bit of stiffness there. He's working to get down in the strike zone. Falling behind three and one. To third, Kaiaspo, one gone. Now Venable, the left handed batter, coming up. And Solarte, a switch hitter on deck. Again, one of the issues for the Dodgers. In the last six weeks or so, finding a way to get to the ninth inning. And this is a shutdown inning. I know the Dodgers are down by a run, but after you get that home run from Ethier, you feel the momentum in your dugout. You want to get them right back in there swinging the bats. Ah! And they're going to get shields out of there and they have to, going to have to beat the bullpen. So JP's got the responsibility of getting them in the dugout. And Howell is scheduled to lead off in the top half of the eighth. And that's not going to happen. A drag bunt and a beauty. That's how it's done. This was just a perfect bunt. He brings it with him, especially with a lefty on the mound, falling off toward third base. Second baseman back. Once he gets it by the pitcher, and with venable speed, really just no chance. Al took a header on the play. He's all right. One out, one on, and Solarte. Two walks and a strikeout against Bolsinger. Justin Upton is on deck. So Larte doesn't like the call and Adrian Johnson doesn't like his reaction. So they're almost even. So Larte's not the hitter from the right side that he is from the left. On the year as a left-handed hitter, so Larte's at 270 from the right-hand side, 179. For Howell, this will be his 21st pitch. 12 strikes. Way outside. Throw one out there. We're going to have a little chat. Well, after that brief chat. Out in the San Diego bullpen, it is Joaquin Benoit to pitch the eighth. There's the veteran. With a two and a third ERA.
Solarte with just two home runs, 26 runs batted in. Ethier's rather deep and left. And a line drive single into left. Venable is on his way to third, and the throw is going to be too late. He's got that long, wide, graceful gait. Venable can run with almost anybody. First and third and one out. You mentioned Andre Ethier's depth, and they're probably playing no doubles in left field right there. But then when you get a base hit in front of you and you're that deep and you've got the wheels of Venable on first, it's going to be tough to get it to third in time. And they push the envelope and one. Kike Hernandez is coming in. The Dodgers are going to make a double switch by the looks of it. Kike Hernandez will take over at shortstop as Rollins made the second to the last out in the seventh. Howell is done. The Dodgers are making a move. And uh, Upton is coming up with first and third, one out. Hatcher's coming in, 2 1 San Diego. Get to Nissan's ride of your life for exciting performance and surprising offers. Shop ChooseNissan.com and buy DraftKings. Play daily fantasy baseball for free on DraftKings.com. Use promo code BLUECREW for free entry. So J.P. Howell. Goes an inning in two thirds, no runs and two hits. The drag bunt base hit by Venable. Solarte hitting under 200 as a right handed batter lashes a line drive into left. Brings in Chris Hatcher with runners at the corners. And the Padres' most dangerous hitter, Upton, coming up. Hatcher delivers a strike and it's nothing in one. Hatcher's 27th appearance and a 662 ERA opposing hitters hitting over 300 against him. And Upton, whether it's in Arizona or here in San Diego, has enjoyed playing against the Dodgers. Nothing in two with a 96 mile an hour fastball up and in. Two to one game. Dodgers struggling to score runs. You cannot throw a strike on the next two pitches for sure. Maybe even the next three pitches. You've got to go for the punch out. Upton has knocked in both Padre runs today. 
He has 17 runs batted in against the Dodgers this year. Call strike three. Fastball that just finds its way back to the outside corner. Looks like a ball to Upton, but a little bit of tail catches the edge. So now it's Matt Kemp's turn. Oh, for two and a walk. One for nine in the series. And has been struck out four times. First and third, two out. This is a huge batter not only for the Dodgers in this game but for Chris Hatcher who's been trying to grasp on to some confidence. And if he can get out of this mess could do him nothing but good. For his confidence and also just picking up your fellow bullpen guy J.P. Howe. He did a heck of a job coming into the game. Hernandez, Peterson, and Puig will bat for the Dodgers in the eighth. Kemp oh. takes a strike. He's locking in on that outside corner to righties right now. He's got a nice solid delivery. Looks like the center of gravity and everything's working in order right to that corner. Five pitches, four strikes. Mid to upper 90s. One and one with two out, first and third, bottom of the seventh. In the right field. We're drifting over. He's there. And he's got it. And that will end the inning. So Chris Hatcher comes in and gets Upton and Kemp with runners at the corners. We go to the eighth. Kike Hernandez, Jock Peterson, and Yasiel Puig coming up. Dodgers trail 2-1. A look at the draft Kings game summary. Holsinger ran out of steam suddenly after four and two thirds. A two run bases loaded single for Upton. Ethier provided his ninth home run of the year to get the Dodgers to within one. Big game James Shields, seven innings a run and five base hits. Struck out six, walked three. Now it's Joaquin Benoit's turn and he'll be facing Kike Hernandez, Jock Peterson, Yasiel Pui. In San Diego, they have averaged about 31,000 fans per game. This weekend, they averaged better than 40,000. Today, 40,056. Last night was their ninth sellout of the year. 
Box office Bafo in San Diego as Kike Hernandez takes outside one ball and no strikes from Joaquin Benoit. Hernandez came in part of the double switch. Peterson and Puig to follow Benoit deals. One ball and one strike. Hal an inning and two thirds, no runs. And a big thank you from Hal to Chris Hatcher. Out of play. As we get into the warmer months with Chris Hatcher. In talking to him sometimes he has trouble in cold weather and he doesn't really have a full toolbox of a guy who has pitched his whole life this is a converted catcher and so when he's fallen on some tough times especially in cold weather it's really hard for him to find in the short left and Upton is there it's hard for him to find a, a, a grip on his split finger and his slider and as we get into these warmer months he might be able to start to find the location and the confidence and and some secondary pitches but he's really going to need to work on that and find a formula to really find the secondary stuff as the weather then gets colder again at the end of the year one out nobody on and jock peterson stepping in peterson today one for two and a walk a hard single to right back in the third inning Piaspo, who doubled in the third, tried to score from right, and Matt Kemp threw a perfect strike. Norris was able to tag him out. There was no doubt about it. the other Dodger run. Ethier's ninth of the year in the seventh. They trailed two to one with one out in the eighth. Two balls and no strikes. So Peterson 17 home runs and 33 runs batted in. Four for his last 28. The big shift is on for Peterson. Against Joaquin Benoit who will turn 38 next month. Rangers Rays Tigers second year in San Diego. Slider turns Peterson into a corkscrew. Big six game hitting streak in jeopardy at the moment. He's next. Two and one to Jock Peterson. That was the pitch Chuck wanted right there, the fastball. The reason why he got turned around the pitch before, he was in hitter's count 2 0, looking for that fastball, kind of trying to cheat a little bit to see if he can get one, take a huge swing. Well, he always takes a huge swing, but take a swing to see if he can drive it out of the park. And that's why he kind of, and then it had a late break, so it kind of had a half swing. That one, he saw the fastball all the way, big cut, and just missed it. Outfield exceptionally deep for Peterson, especially Venable in center. Up takes outside is now full. Quig and then Gonzalez to follow. The Dodgers as a team have walked more than any other club in the National League, averaging three and a half walks per game. They're at three now. Dodgers have 531 hits this year, and then you had another 223 walks, which is how they come to lead the league in a 335 on base percentage.
Benoit's 11th pitch of the inning. Peterson awaits. Peterson is making Ben Wall work. Joaquin's put away pitches his changeup. He had trouble early in his career getting his fastball down. We added the cutter so that when he made his fastball mistakes, at least have some movement on it. Again, the 3 2. Right to first, right to Alonzo. I said we because he pitched for me when I was the pitching coach for the Texas Rangers. And really came up as a guy we thought could be a starter, but never really could keep his fastball down. And that 3-2 cutter right there to Jock was the, the pitch that we really converted his fastball to. So now Puig and the Dodgers down to their final four outs. Top of the ninth at AT&T Park and the Diamondbacks. Are making this weekend miserable for the Giants. Four nothing Arizona. What do you always say, Charlie? We're going to send them a fruit basket. A fruit basket. A little thank you note. Mm -hmm. The Dodgers this year are 23 and 10 against the Padres, Rockies, and Diamondbacks combined. Arizona is just. Kill in San Francisco. Yeah, CL's trying to tie it up on that swing, no. He was. It was a, and it was a pitch that he can get his arms extended and show off that power. Right there, that was the pitch. I think his timing was off just a hair. He was out in front just a little bit. He tilted his head to the sky and ex explained something. One and one to Pui. Did he go around? Yep. First base umpire Bill Miller with the clenched fist. Yep. yep. Well, Ruby De La Rosa is pitching the shutout up there. Six hits through eight innings. We will not go quietly in this at bat. Yasiel, a six game hitting streak on the line. Adrian Gonzalez hoping to get a chance here in the eighth and bust out of his slump. 2 1 pods, 1 2 pitch, 2 and 2. Oh, well, we had a 2 1 nail biter last night. More of the same on this Sunday afternoon. And about a three and a half, four hour flight to Texas for the Dodgers immediately after the game. Three and two. Why didn't that bat for Puig here? He's grinding it out. If he can work a walk here or a base hit, you got to believe he's going to try and steal. It wouldn't matter if Adrian Gonzalez got to lead off next inning. Or if he got to hit with a man in scoring position, if Yasiel can get his way, to find his way to second, with a couple of good things happening. Three balls and two strikes. Ben was 19th pitch of the year. Quite an at bat for Yasiel Puig. Puig wins the battle on the seventh and final pitch. 
Now Adrian Gonzalez. See, I would disagree with you on, on running him. Really? A couple of reasons. One, you've only got four outs left to play with. Mm -hmm. Two, Gonzalez, if he gets aboard in the ninth inning, you'd have to presumably pinch run for I him. would pinch run for yeah. him. But at this point, now you got the shift on. Puig stays put. One ball, no strikes. A double is likely going to score. Well, you, you play a double. Yeah, you played yeah. no doubles defense, mm -hmm. though. You're going to try and hit it against that. And you got the speed, and he's going to run with two out. I mean, that's the great thing about this game. You say potato. And I say don't steal. <laughs> or potato. <laughs> Let's see. One and oh. There's a strike, one and one. Just hit it out of the park. Nobody has to run hard. Exactly. Adrian's had a very wide strike zone this whole series. And I don't like that one. Well, they, uh, both sides, you see, you see how they're upset with the umpire. All you want is just consistency behind that. That's all. Got Adrian Gonzalez and home plate umpire Adrian Johnson. Lined into right field. Base hit. That's going to roll to the wall. Here comes Puig. He is being sent home. Here comes Puig, and he will score. And going to third base is Gonzalez, and he is safe. And the Dodgers have tied it at two. It's potato. <laughs> <laughs> he beat the doubles defense. He hit it in the corner off the jury box. Angled it in there. Strike zone wide, strike zone tight. Adrian Gonzalez can make you potato salad right here. That double, and thank God Puig didn't steal. <laughs> Because now he gets to run when the ball's in play, and boy, does he turn it on. Lorenzo Bundy waving here. No chance at home. No mark, and you pass the butter and the salt. <laughs> now that he was able to get the third. And base hit, wild pitch, right? Wild pitch maybe here, you never know. But now it also puts pressure on the pitcher so he doesn't throw that ball in the dirt and bury it. Since Howie got Kendrick. a third. Been a great clutch hitter all year. Fouls it off. Well, I'll tell you what, that's one thing that's about Adrian Gonzalez. Even when he's struggling, even when he's, we're talking about, is he going to, you know, get out of a slump for him? And he comes up big in a clutch situation. His major league leading 22nd double, took third on the throw, his 41st run batted in. And that seven pitch walk to Puig set it all up. Kendrick is 0 for 3. Down on strikes to end the inning. But Adrian Gonzalez with his 22nd double of the year. Doubles home Yasiel Pui. And we are all even as we go to the bottom half of the eighth.
this Friday when the Dodgers take on the San Francisco Giants and take your place on the field to see the postgame fireworks featuring a mix by DJ Jeremy Blacklow. For more information, go to Dodgers.com slash promotions. So Adrian Gonzalez mired in a slump. Knocks in Yasiel Puig, who worked out a seven pitch walk against Joaquin Benoit. And Gonzalez would tie the score. Adam Libertor now on in relief. His 22nd appearance. And he'll be facing Alonzo Norris and Spangenberg. And if anybody gets on, Amarista. Three of those four left handed batters. Thus the presence of Lipitor, who has struck out 18 and walked five and not quite 18 innings of work. The opposing hitters just 175 against him. There's a strike to Alonzo. With the bases loaded in the fifth inning, where Mike Bolsinger just suddenly lost it. J.P. Howell came in, got Alonzo to ground to first. And end what could have been a really ugly inning, as is the Padres scored two, but the Dodgers with a run in the seventh, a run in the eighth, have pulled all even. So Hatcher, two thirds of an inning. Strikeout and a flyout. It's got to do his confidence some good. Libertor, the fourth Dodger pitcher of the day. Lined into center field and Peterson. He's just remarkable. Has that explosive first step and then as graceful as a gazelle and tracking it down. Well, he reads this right off the bat. Watch that first step gone. And that ball was well hit in the gap. It was a line drive. Gets a good read. Dodgers over the years have had people that have played center field. Now we have a center fielder. So one out and nobody on. And Derek Norris 0 for 3 takes a strike. Nothing in one. Norris has been struck out twice. He's also flied to center. Norris hit a home run. You remember on Friday night after the misplay in the infield, Yimmy Garcia next pitch served up the two run home run to Norris. And the Dodgers would come back. With two of their own in the eighth and pull out a 4 3 win. Last night, the Padres 2 to 1. This afternoon, we're tied at 2 1 out bottom of the eighth. One ball, one strike to Norris. Seven home runs, 39 runs batted in. On the year, the Dodgers seven and four against the Padres, four and two at Dodger Stadium, three and two down here. Last year, they beat the Padres 12 out of 19. Three exciting games. Three big crowds. When you look around Petco Park, you think it's pretty much evenly divided between Dodger and Padre fans. Depends on the color blue or the shade of blue that the fans are wearing. Three and two to Norris. Libertor's execution, his body language. It's all aggressive. He's going to come at you. Strength against strength. He's not trying to fool anybody. Coal country, western Pennsylvania, Beaver Falls. Oh, 
Old fashioned hardball. Mm -hmm. That's football country. Right on the Pennsylvania. And the Libertor is built like a football oh, yes player. He is, huh? <laughs> mm -hmm. Probably the second most famous athlete to come out of Beaver Falls. Joe Namath has him by that much. Three and two with one out in the bottom of the eighth. Bolsinger, Howell, Hatcher, and now Libertor. Norris down on strikes for the third time today. Two out. Fastball away, slightly up. Just beat him to the spot. Keep hitting your area. You don't have to be perfect, but he definitely has half the equation right. He gets it on the outside corner, slightly elevated. So now two out, and Spangenberg coming up. And he's one for three. Looking ahead to the Dodger ninth. Grandall, a pinch hitter. Greg Kimbrell is up just in case they grab themselves a lead. Well, Benoit, 26 pitches in the eighth. Jimmy Garcia is warming in the Dodger bullpen. Spangenberg tied up in knots. Nothing in two. No balls, two strikes, two out. Libertor retires the side in order. Strikes out Norris and Spangenberg. We go to the ninth. Dodgers and Padres are tied at two. B.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment, at any moment, with in game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stat cast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. 
So here is Craig Kimbrell. Dodgers saw his work last night. They didn't like it much. He's going to bring it hard, and he's actually started to mix his slider in a little bit more. Been very good at adjusting. He has a tendency sometimes to get wild and wild high. Locked in pretty quickly yesterday after showing a few different ones that were wide. As Bonnie Grandal takes inside and low one ball and no strikes. Last night against Kimbrell in the ninth, Puig single to center. But Gonzalez bounced into a double play. Kendrick was struck out, and that was that. Randall 0 for 2 in a walk. Takes a strike. It's 1 and 1. The umpires this series are lighting up Twitter. Dodger fans are unhappy with the strike zone, just like the ball club. Foul tip got a piece of Norris, and it's one and two. Kenley Jansen warming up alongside Jimmy Garcia. Randall down on strikes, first out of the night. Randall is looking back. He talked about the Dodger hitters. He was upset about that very first strike. The first strike that was called to them changed the bat to one in one, which could have been 2-0. And you have a totally different mentality up there in the 2 0 count compared to that 1 1. Got to try to battle and make and try not to let it affect you for the rest of your at bat. It's a hurdle you're not supposed to have to jump over. Eighth year, a home run and a triple this afternoon, and three at bats and takes a strike. It's nothing in one. Kimbrell gets right. It doesn't even look comfortable. It works. Nothing in two. In the seventh inning this afternoon. Andre Ethier's ninth home run of the season. His 27th run batted in. Got the Dodgers back to within two to one. And then Gonzalez... With a two out double in the eighth tied the score and that's where we are with one out of the ninth. Andre up to 293. The count is 0 and 2. Third base umpire Jim Wolf. The older brother of Randy with the safe sign and so that means Heath here will see at least another pitch. Justin Turner in the on deck circle. Ether held off again. Two and two. Scoreboard said curveball eighty seven. It was my average fastball. <laughs> <laughs> The 2 2. Ethier fights it off. Juan Nicasio, fresh off his manicure, is warming up in the Dodger bullpen. He split the fingernail on his middle right finger the other night. 
So they put a little crazy glue on and filed it down. And would you like a buff with that? Ethier works the count full three and two. The two out walk to Puig in the eighth was a key turning point in that inning and to this point this game. As we mentioned the Dodgers have worked out more walks than any other team in the National League. So they're getting basically four free base runners every game this year. Ethier stays alive. Good job by Andre Ethier. That was a good pitch on the outer half. Low and away. Too close to take where there was going to be a ball or a strike and he's able to fight that off. And this will be the eighth pitch of this at bat. Puig's walk resulted in after seven pitches. How about that? That's a tough take after having all the other strike zones that we've seen. Mm -hmm. right. And I think that's what the hesitation was for from Andre at there. I thought it was a ball. I thought it was out of the zone, but he was going, well, not really sure because you called that today. But he did a good job just working that walk. And here comes Justin Turner. Since the beginning of last year, he's been as tough an out as there's been in the game. He swings and misses, and it's nothing in one. The afternoon off, Kiaspo started at third. Kiaspo is on deck. Turner at 319. Five home runs, 24 runs batted in. Nine doubles on base percentage 391. The knee, which he fouled a ball off of a few days back, finally beginning to feel like normal again. One and one. Eighth year with above average speed at first. To refer back to an inning prior, Charlie, in our discussion, the Dodgers need one more potato. <laughs> <laughs> Outside. <laughs> Welcome to the Food Channel's <laughs> broadcast of the Dodgers and the Padres. Charlie and I had a debate on whether Yasiel Puig should steal or not. It was a potato-potato debate. Charlie's side won the argument as Adrian Gonzalez hit a double and drove in Yasiel, so we called it potato. And a tie score with one out and one on in the ninth. Turner. That ain't fair. 86. You're waiting for something 97. Well, in comparison, the speed of this pitch right here is Mike Bolsinger's fastball. <laughs> On a good day. It takes an awful lot of arm speed to spin a ball with that rotation and get that break and still throw it 86 87. Turner down on strikes. Two out. When you're throwing a breaking ball, you're actually deflecting the ball as you're spinning it. When you're throwing the fastball, your fingers are behind the ball, so all your arm speed goes into the ball. This is one with the fingers behind the ball. The pitch prior had the fingers off to the side of the ball. So Nicasio's the one and only warming up in the Dodger pen now. Garcia has sat down. 
So is Kenley Jansen. And Kiaspo is a hitter. He's a double, a flyout, and a strikeout. Kiaspo back in the third inning led off the inning with a double. With one out, Peterson slashed a hard single to right. Kiaspo tried to score and was gunned down by Matt Kemp. Kiaspo his seventh start with the Dodgers and he takes a strike. Diamondbacks shut out the Giants today, four to nothing. It's the same pitch that Andre Ethier walked on. <laughs> now it's a strike. <laughs> Either way, it's one and one with two out. Kike Hernandez on deck. Kiaspo takes inside. And it's two and one. There's been, you know, grumblings about the strike zone all over baseball, not just from the Dodgers in this series. I'm wondering if the umpires were notified to help the pace of play, uh, expanding the strike zone a little bit this year. Slowly hit Spangenberg with the backhand flip out of the glove. And that will end the inning. So it looks like Nicasio is going to be coming in out of the bullpen. As we go to the bottom of the ninth, the Dodgers and Padres are tied at two. The bottom half of the ninth inning. We last saw Nicasio on Wednesday against Arizona. Came out of the game, you may recall, and his middle fingernail was cracked. And he pieced it back together, and away we go. For Nicasio. His 21st appearance. 29 strikeouts, 12 walks, opposing hitters hitting 221 against him. And Amarista will lead it off. Clint Barmas in the on deck circle to pinch hit. Well, the Dodger bullpen after Nicasio is down to Garcia, Raven, and Jansen. Amarista one for three. Nicasio's first pitch at the bottom of the ninth is a call strike and it's nothing in one. Amarista two for 12 against Nicasio in his career. The 
Dodgers can somehow win this game and take this series. They'll head to Texas with a three and a half game lead on the Giants. Should they lose it, the Padres would move in to within four games of the Dodgers. A lot riding on this ninth inning and perhaps beyond. Lead off single for Amarista in the bottom of the ninth. A one two pitch went with it the other way. Some ways you don't mind this pitch at all. Off the plate, up, you're getting a little guy maybe to hit the ball in the air and fly out. But Amarista does a nice job getting on top of that fastball that was off the plate and up. A lot of times with that type of swing, you're just going to get a weak ground ball or a pop up. But he made a very nice swing. Here's Clint Barmas. It was Barmas who hit the home run in the seventh inning on Friday night. And that crazy 4 3 Dodger win. Barmas with one sacrifice this year. Marista has stolen three out of four. Randall has thrown out eight of 30. So then's the numbers. Let's see how this all plays out. Good bunt. Nicasio with underhanded toss a little bit high. There is Kendrick taking it out of the air, but the winning run now in scoring position. Well, you got to back up in the infield now. You got to keep the ball in the infield. So you're deep in the infield, giving up the chopper off the plate infield hit. Same, same and then you've got to pinch in the outfield, throw the runner out of the plate. And here is Will Venable. Hitting 360 with runners in scoring position. And he's been a thorn in the side of the Dodgers ever since he's come up. And you see the outfield very shallow except for Andre Ethier in left field. Now Marista great speed at second base. Bundy's trying to get Ethier to come in with the speed at second base. Venable two for four. Ocasio misses low and outside. When there's a runner on third and a possible fly ball and a tag situation, you play slightly deeper because you want to be able to get behind the ball and throw the guy out the plate. But when it's a base hit that can beat you, you've got to play shallow. You risk the ball over your head, you'll catch it in the air. Two balls and no strikes. And Hervis Salarte, who's been on base three out of four times today, is on deck. Venable, a 270 hitter. Five home runs, 17 runs batted in. And Marisa, the winning run at second base with one out in the bottom of the ninth. And now Grandal's going to go out and have a chat with Nicasio. Now there's not a whole lot that Rick Honeycutt or Don Mattingly could do. It's up to him and them. And it's two and zero to Venable. Now three and zero.
Venable, one of two players in Ivy League history to be all Ivy League in both baseball and basketball. Former Padre Chris Young, the other. And a four pitch walk. Now it's a semi intentional, intentional walk. Once you fall behind him 2 0, oh, you're not going to give in and worry about the walk. You're going to continue to try and hit the corner. He stands over there at first base, and sets up the possible double play. Venable is essentially a six foot four inch potted plant. All that really counts is standing next to Jose Valentin. All that really counts is the winning run in Amarisa at second base with one out in the bottom of the ninth. Justin Upton on deck. There's nobody else in the Dodger bullpen, so it's entirely up to Nicasio here in the ninth. In one run games this year, the Dodgers are 9 and 11. San Diego is 8 and 10. And Maurice to the winning run. Fly ball. Drifting on back is Eve. Here's got plenty of room. So Salarte flies to left. Runners stay put. There's two out. And here comes Justin Upton. Who provided the game winning home run last night in the eighth. He's got a chance to be the walk off hero. This afternoon. Well, right now the infield no more you're back you can't let a ball get through on the ground but the outfield with a power hitter at the plate and two outs you can't play so far in that all of a sudden you're going to cut down the runner at second on a base hit because he's going to go on the crack of the bat so you've got to play normal depth in the outfield to cover as much ground as possible on the fly ball now because you're probably not going to throw the runner out on a base hit so you're guarding for the fly ball. An ominous number is up Upton steps in against Nicasio in his career five for ten. He was a 391 hitter against Granke the other night. Outside and low one ball no strikes. Now even though it's first and second you still have a base open and of the two bats that are the possibility for the third out for the Dodgers Upton or Kemp. Kemp is the cooler of the two. Two balls and no strikes. And it seems like Nicasio is pitching to him that, that way. Well, but yesterday, Zach Greinke had a chance to pitch around Justin Upton. Came back with a 3-1 slider. Very nice pitch. Low and on the corner came back with a 3 2 slider missed his spot with Matt Kemp on deck probably shaking his head over that pitch right now and I don't think Nicasio wants to repeat that error. So it'll be. If Upton somehow walks. Kemp against his old team. Kemp today is over three and a walk. And struck out. Amaris to the game winning run at second base. Three balls and no strikes. Uh, you still have to be careful here, even 3 0, because I'll tell you, I mean, Bud Black is giving Upton a green light, so if he likes it, I. He'll swing away. If I'm Yasmani Grandral, I sit six to eight inches off the outside corner. I give him a semi intentional pass. I make sure Howie Kendrick at second base knows we're going that wide so he can't punch something into right field. 3 0. Oh. Into center field. Peterson's got a long way to go and he tracks it down and runs into the wall and saves the day. What a catch by Jock Peterson! We have guys who have played center field 
And now we have a center fielder. That's about as good as it gets. If he doesn't make it, the game is over. Face first into the padded wall. Wow. We'll go to the 10th. Hernandez, Peterson, and Puig are coming up. inning. Two on, two out, bottom of the ninth, tie score. Upton literally sends Peterson to the wall. Catches are made from jumps, routes, speed, and courage. Yes. Wow, what a reaction. I mean, Jock looked both ways. Did you notice that? Looked over his left shoulder and then back over his right shoulder and then made the catch hitting the wall. Oh, spectacular play. Kike Hernandez leads off. New pitcher for the Padres is Sean Kelly. His 19th appearance. Pitched a couple of innings on Friday night. So into extra innings we go. And the count is nothing and two to Hernandez. Dodgers two and two working overtime this year. The Padres are four and two. As soon as the Dodgers hit the dugout, somebody yelled, come on guys, we don't get paid for overtime. Let's get it done. Well, they're happy to be in it had it not been for the Peterson catch. Mm -hmm. The third. Ooh. Nicely done by Salarte. This was a playoff game, it'd be an instant classic. Salat Salarte just throwing the hands out there. When that ball was hit, recognized that it was gonna be one of those in-between hops. We just went out there, threw out the hand, made a nice play. Well, here's Peterson. He did it with the glove in the bottom of the ninth. Let's see what he can do with the bat in the top of the tenth. One for three and a walk. Outside and high, one ball and no strikes. That was as fine a catch as we've seen all year. And considering the importance of the moment to boot. Yeah, the situation put an asterisk on it. Justin Upton thought he had the game won. Jock Peterson had a different idea. So did everybody except Jock Peterson. There's a strike and it's one and two.
Not a bad rookie year for Jock Peterson. Defensively, he's already established. There may be center fielders as good as he is. I'm not sure there's one that is better. For all that he could do out there. But down on strikes. That's a second out of the tenth, and Yasiel Puig is coming up. Peterson after that spectacular catch showered in much deserved high fives. Now Puig in this game however it turns itself out in the eighth inning with two out and nobody on we worked out a seven pitch walk and then Gonzalez would double him home. Had there been no walk, there'd be no Gonzalez, and we wouldn't be in the tent. <laughs> Another one why this is one of the reasons why they, both sides have been a little unhappy with the strike zone. We a six game hitting streak in jeopardy. Not anymore. Well, you want to shift? Okay. He singles to right. So we got on base in the eighth inning with two out, nobody on, and Gonzalez doubled him home. When Yasiel got here to the United States, started playing the big leagues. A lot of his hits were just like that one right there. Base hits to right. Surprising that they were shifting on him, but on the short term, lately they must be seeing more pull from him. But Black coming out, presumably he's going to go to Frank Garces, the left-hander. Well, there goes Kelly. We've got a pitching change. Gonzalez, who doubled home the tying run in the eighth. With a chance to knock home the leading run in the tenth when we come back. as in his bullpen and against left-handed hitters he's no great shakes are hitting 296 against him and as Adrian Gonzalez steps in Gonzalez is batting 308 against left-handed pitcher in the eighth inning after that two out walk to Puig a hard double into the right field corner that would allow Puig to come around and score tie the game at two and that's where we are with two out we get first base again here in the 10th inning. Gonzalez with the big hit, his 22nd double of the year. First pitch, fly ball, left field. Drifting on back is Upton, and so much for the drama. 
No runs and one hit. Matt Kemp will lead off for the Padres in the 10th. Alonzo and Norris to follow. 2 2 after nine and a half. Some intrigue, I suppose, as Chris Heisey takes over in right field where Yasiel Puig had been. Puig, of course, singled in the top half of the 10th. He walked in the 8th, came around to score on the double by Gonzalez that tied the game. But Heisey takes over in right. And uh, perhaps it's a double switch, but that would seem to be a little excessive. Josh Raven making his fourth appearance with the Dodgers and in the highest pressure situation of his young career. And if you thought Craig Kimbrell threw hard, well, Josh Raven will be right there with him. He's been clocked as high as 101 down in the minor leagues. And how do you stumble upon a guy who can throw that hard? Well, he struggled with injury, he struggled with command issues. But now they've seemed to have honed those things down to where he is healthy. And throwing strikes. Grew up a Dodger fan. And the first time he set foot inside Dodger Stadium, wearing a Dodger uniform, one of the highlights of his young life. And wouldn't you know it, he's facing Matt Kemp here in the bottom of the 10th, tied at two. Puig is out of the game. Heisey is in right, and for reasons we do not know. I just wonder if he was thinking, Charlie, that. Okay, Josh Raven, I might want him to go more than just one inning if this continues past that. I'm thinking, well, it's going to take at least two innings before Yasiel may come up again. But mm -hmm. that's a. Uh... Garcia and Jansen are the only other pitchers in the Dodger bullpen now. This is not only a tough situation for Josh, it's a tough situation facing Matt Kemp. When you grow up a Dodger fan and all of a sudden you're asked to get somebody out that you've watched on TV and rooted for, it's one more hurdle that you have to go over of being a big leaguer. Six four two thirty. Josh Raven. That Kemp go around. No, says crew chief first base umpire Bill Miller. Two balls and a strike to Kemp. Robbed of a hit by Peterson. He wasn't the only one today. Two and two. 99. Raven Chatsworth High School lives in Tarzana, born in West Hills. Turned pro in 2006 and finally has made it to the major leagues.
Dodgers signed him as a free agent in the winter of 13 and spent the year last year between double A and triple A. Now the 2 2. Looped into right field for a hit. So Kemp is aboard with a leadoff single in the bottom of the 10th. The high slider broke just enough for Matt Kemp to get a barrel on it. If this hangs a little bit more, he probably jams himself, but it broke just enough at the end that Matt could bail out, get the hands inside it, and loop it into right field. Now Yonder Alonso coming up. Kemp has his legs back. He is seven for seven in stolen base tries. Grandall is eight for 30. Throwing him out. Alonzo today is one for four. Breaks his bat. Gonzalez to second. Back to first. And a double play. So quickly, two out and nobody on. He missed his target, Nomar, but when you throw that hard, you can miss your target and still get some success. That's exactly right. And he jams on broken bat and then just smooth as silk over there. Adrian Gonzalez makes the throw. You got Kike over there. And he gets Adrian able to get back easily to the bag to complete that double play. Bud Black might want to have a, a replay review as to whether or not Kike Hernandez kept his foot on the bag at second. But would that constitute one of those, you know, neighborhood plays where they say that we are not really going to go review those? I think they have said they won't review those anymore. It looks well, like they're, they're going to. <laughs> I guess that doesn't count as one of those. And that's what Don Mattingly is going to come out and question of Bill Miller, the crew chief, and Doug Eddings, the second base umpire. New York are going to have to put their bonbons right. and popcorn right. down. I mean, from the back angle, it looks like he's off because you don't know when that ball's in his glove. The other angle was tough to decide to see if his toe was still on the bag. Parker Lounger and in, in the media room. Well, like, like, like I said, I thought they were talking about not being able to re review these plays here on a double play just for the protection of the middle infielders. And well, here they are going to go question it. The X factor is that Kemp is about 15 well, feet I, away. I understand yeah. that, but, yeah. you know, that's just because he was slow to get down there or you had plenty of time. So Bill Miller. And Doug Eddings. They're listening. Well, it's either one out and one on or two out and nobody on. And safe. Kike Hernandez's foot was not on the bag as he received the throw from Gonzalez. Well, it's the rare 3-6-3, one out at first. 
Only a, sub, mean, you I, subtract the, the other three, don't you? The other three six. I don't know. It came back to him. Uh, he yeah. threw, he caught it. He threw it yeah. to the shortstop, and he came back to him, and he got one out at first. Right. So the runner is safe at second base. Yeah, three six, a three six three, and he advanced. Now this is Derek Norris fouling it out of play. So that's a huge play. Yeah, that's a big play. I mean, that's. Now the winning run is in scoring position with one out instead of two out and nobody on. Norris is 0 for 4. And he's going to get himself a new bat. Each of these three games has had drama in its own way. The crazy game on Friday night when the Padres scored three in the bottom of the seventh. Dodgers came back with two in the eighth. The Upton home run in the bottom of the eighth off Granky last night. And now a replay could loom large in the outcome of this afternoon's game. Nothing in two. I think there's a caveat to that rule at second base that if the throw is errant or slightly offline where it could be ruled that it was just going for one out and a force play. And so immediately when the feed is not directly at the player at second they they omit the in the neighborhood play no that protects the shortstop or second baseman and they turn it into a force play was his foot on the bag. And I think that's why Don Mattingly didn't get tossed. I think that's why he didn't argue. 0 oh 2 to Norris. Up high. You tell me because it wasn't a perfect throw, because it was yeah. just off slightly, or because because Kike had to reach for the ball, all of a sudden there's no neighborhood play anymore, and it's reviewable because of the errant throw. Or slightly errant throw. <laughs> Errant that enough. Like, that, that was like that's, that's what that was like the error because of judgment called him, right? Yep. Norris down on strikes. That's huge. There's two outs now, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a runner on second, and so that was a big pitch. And he got it by him. It's pretty doggone hard to hit something on the higher floors. At 90 some mile an hour. That fast, that high. And I'll tell you, it's the guys that are coming up, the ones that are really short to the ball, that spray the ball, that are able to, you know, get the guys who throw this hard, like Spangenberg and Amarista. Spangenberg, one for four. Fouls it back, it's nothing in one. You're so right. The guys that'll play pepper with a 99 mile an hour fastball are the ones that are dangerous. Amarista is on deck. Spangenberg today is one for four. 0 and 1, two out, bottom of the 10th. There's a strike. Nothing in two. If we go to the 11th, it'll be Kendrick, Grandall, and Ethier. The fifth extra inning game of the season for the Dodgers. They're two and two to this point. One and two. Kemp the winning run at second base. 10 hits for the Padres, 7 hits for the Dodgers. The Giants have already lost today. And the Dodger charter is going to wait a little longer. 
Two balls, two strikes. Dodgers are expected to arrive in Dallas Fort Worth about one o'clock in the morning local time. Get some sleep and then out to the ballpark tomorrow night and Tuesday night. Two balls two strikes and two out. Raven to Spangenberg swung on and missed strike three Josh Raven striking out Norris and Spangenberg after the replay went against him and the Dodgers will go to the 11th tied at two. his brief major league career comes out of it unscathed and Kendrick leads off here in the 11th inning Kendrick today 0 for 4 takes high Two balls and no strikes. Kendrick has struck out twice, bounced into a double play, and bounced to short. There's a strike, two and one from Frank Garces. He is the fifth Padre pitcher of the day. Kimbrell has already been used. And Howie Kendrick leads off the 11th with a base hit. Seem familiar like on Friday night? Yeah. How he's been in the middle or at the end of most Dodger rallies and W's of late. So just good job by Howie Kendrick. I mean that ball was down and away. And he just keeps his bat through the zone so nice and even today there's a couple of bats where he looked like he might have been just a little off today struggling a bit and then he regroups and gets a big base hit right here. The switch hitting Yasmani Grandal batting from the right side for the first time today. To third. Solarte throws to second on the first of the play. There's nothing to review on this double play. The Padres haven't played perfectly right down the line, and they go 5 4 3. The Dodgers didn't get their double play when it went 3 6 3 because there was no possible collision. And so you are able to review that. That one, there was no doubt. 
Perfect throws from Solarte, Spangenberg, and then on to a lot. Two out, nobody on. And here is Ethier. A triple, a home run, and a hammer throw down the first baseline. How's that happen, Nomar? Sometimes all of a sudden you're getting that ball. You're thinking he, see how you kind of reached at the end. You can lose grip of the bat right there. Sometimes your hand just might have been slippery when you stepped in the box. So sometimes guys aren't using enough pine tar that they, they don't want the bat to feel too sticky because yeah. it makes it feel slow. That they want to have that balance. But, and you're just, you're thinking about, like I said, that one, it looked like he was on the outer half. And then he reached for it. A little bit more because it broke away, kind of tailed away, and that extra oh, I, it's going away from me, and that extra reach, you get it more on your fingertips than in maybe in the palm of your hand or grip of your hand, and it flies out. Oh, and two to Ethier with two out in the eleventh. Ethier with his ninth home run of the year. Back in the seventh inning, grounds it to the right side. Half dozen steps on the outfield grass. Spangenberg throws him out. Garces at eight pitch inning. We go to the bottom of the 11th. Knotted at two. Amazing catch by Jock Peterson in the bottom of the ninth to rob Justin Upton. I received a text from senior advisor to the president, Ned Coletti, and he said that catch was un unbelievable. My goodness. He said he's like Jim Edmonds, you guys. Tremendous presence going back on a ball no matter the direction. Best center fielder he can remember playing on a team that he worked for. He said absolutely no exaggeration. He brings up a really good point. How is Jock 11th in the all-star voting? There is a lot of similarity between Peterson and Jim Edmonds uh, offensively and especially defensively. Edmonds big swinger struck out a lot hit a lot of home runs. And he can track them down. Like Edmonds did. Jock Peterson. Well, if Dodger center fielders over the years that have played at least three years in center field you got to think about guys like Matt Kemp Dave Roberts Brett Butler John Shelby. Ken Landro, Rick Monday, Willie Davis, and all the way back to Duke Snyder and Carl Ferrillo. This guy out there right now has got a chance to be there a lot longer than three years. Mo could patrol it. There's Duke. There's Dave Robbins. Into right center field. Heisey and Peterson. That's the first out of the 11th. Meanwhile, Josh Raven, the game is essentially now in his hands. 
Well, you're going to Texas where you can go through some pitchers in Texas and that warm weather and that ballpark, the way the ball flies around there. So used a lot of pitchers here today and you might want to use one up the whole way so that you have a full bullpen when you get to Texas. So with one out, Will Middlebrooks is pinch hitting. Padres are down to Myers and Hedges on their bullpen. And a fast ball from Raven, 97. Again, the Dodgers' next day off is not until July 2nd. And they're in the middle of this 34 game, 34 day span. So as a result, Mattingly's not just managing today, he's managing for essentially the next two weeks. And Josh Raven had a two inning outing against Colorado. That's been his longest up here in the big leagues. In that uh, game against the Rockies back on June the 3rd, no runs, no hits. Two and one to Middlebrooks, Venable on deck. There's a strike. Two and two. Venables had quite a day and he's on deck. But Raven about to throw his 23rd pitch. Up around the whiskers. Three and two. Here's the full count pitch. Swung on and missed strike three. Raven has struck out three. You could say, how can a hitter swing at that pitch three and two? That's not a strike. Well, you take a look at something 98 and see if you can determine if it's a strike right away. <laughs> oh, with that velocity, like you said, and there's also been some of those that call that were questionable, whether they've been off the play or not. So you go up there knowing the Strike zone hasn't been so consistent, so you end up expanding your zone. Will Venable, two for four and a walk, has also scored a run. When you're sitting in a big league bench, Nomar, and you know this, just explain it, fan, your eye line is right almost at the knee level of the hitter. And so you get a good read on it. Is he calling a low strike or not yeah. from the bench? One ball, no strikes. Venable to second base. And we'll go to the 12th. Tied at two. Josh Raven has been terrific in the two innings he has worked to this point.
Justin Upton. A two-run single in the fifth. Off Mike Bolsinger. Andre Ethier would get the Dodgers back to within one with his ninth home run of the season. That came in the seventh. And after a two-out walk to Yasiel Puig in the eighth, Adrian Gonzalez doubled into the right field corner. Puig would come around and score. The game could have ended in the bottom half of the ninth. Winning run, Amaris is at second base. And it was Jock Peterson crashing into the wall. Spectacular catch, saved the day in the game, and here we go to the 12th. And Chris Heisey will lead it off. Heisey takes high and outside, one ball and no strikes. Now Heisey came in in the 10th inning after, uh, and Puig would come out, and this presumably is the reason why. Leading off here in the 12th inning. Well, if you're into pitch counts, that's the 310th pitch of the game. <laughs> and is your arm tired? 190 have been for strikes. Nobody has thrown more than the Dodger starter, Mike Bolsinger. He threw 89 of them. Isaac with a fly ball to left and hooking foul and out of play. New pitcher for the Padres, or we should say the latest pitcher for the Padres, is Dale Thayer. His 29th appearance. 18 strikeouts, 8 walks in 26 innings. Kiaspo and Hernandez to follow. And Heisey Big Rip fouls it back. Pennsylvania born and bred Heisey. Chris Heisey. With the Reds until this winter. Outside. One and two. Kenley Jansen out in the bullpen is just watching, hoping that the Dodgers can get a run and he can come in and get a save. But Heisey's down on strikes, and that's the first out of the 12. Kiaspo today, a double and four at bats. They are the fifth reliever employed by the Padres today. Kiaspo takes a strike and it's nothing in one. So it looks like Raven will come out and pitch the bottom of the 12th, his third inning. If the Dodgers are unable to score here in the top half. You have Jansen and Yimmy Garcia out there. Here's Kenley just in case. Into right field. Kemp going back and he can't get it. It rolls to the wall. Kiaspo's on his way to second base and he'll arrive there with a stand-up double. Kiaspo's second double of the game. And Kike Hernandez coming up with a chance to be a hero. Kiaspo with another good swing. Very similar to his double earlier in the game that went off the wall. Just staying with it. Driving it. Now he's in scoring position and see if the Dodgers are able to knock him in. Kike Hernandez with a chance to be a hero. 257 on the year. One ball, no strikes. Hernandez four for 12 with runners in scoring position. Takes up and in, 2-0. Now, all of a sudden, Kenley Jans is throwing a little harder out there. <laughs> He's kind of out there for a while, kind of sightseeing, throwing a pitch every now and again. To 
terrific game today. Here's a 2-0. Three balls and no strikes. And who's on deck? Well, Jock Peterson, who made the spectacular catch to send this game into extra innings. And he may well have a chance to give the Dodgers the lead. But Hernandez takes a strike. It's three and one. If you're just joining us, the Giants lost again at home to the Diamondbacks. Hernandez takes a walk. crowd noise for a moment you think you're at Dodger Stadium right about now a lot of hitters are saying all right don't do too much all you need is a base hit but we haven't seen that kind of swing out of jock all year <laughs> he's one for four hit the ball solidly twice a single to right in the third inning with Kiaspo at second base being sent home he was gunned down by Kemp at the plate the inside and low one ball and no strikes and in his next at bat, Peterson hit a one hop scorcher to Spangenberg. So here's Jock. 17 home runs, 33 runs batted in. Fouls it back. One ball, one strike. Alex Guerrero on deck, coming up as a possible pinch hitter, occupying the on deck circle right now. And no, he's not working on switch hitting right there. That's one of his practice swings. He'll take it left and right handed. <laughs> Jock Peterson, 268 with runners in scoring position. Inside. Heisey struck out to begin the inning. Then Kiaspo doubled. Kike Hernandez walked. 2 2, one out, top of the 12th. Kayaspo, moderate speed at second. Hernandez, good speed, throw down to second base. Justin Turner was thrown out in a similar fashion by Norris night before last. Walk is not as good as a hit right here, but it sure is a very nice play setting. With Alex Guerrero on deck, bases loaded one out would be a nice place to live for the Dodgers. And the way Guerrero's been hitting this year off the bench. Inside ball four, bases are loaded. Now, Darren Balsley, the pitching coach, going to try and settle down there. Looks like a group therapy session. Everybody's on the hill now. And Alex Guerrero was also going over there to talk to Adrian Gonzalez while on the on-deck circle. He was talking about, you know, what do you see from Thayer? And he's telling him, you know, he'll have some sink, some run. Just so he has an idea when he goes to the plate. Because right now you're thinking that's coming in. You're going, all right, it's just one out. Got the bases loaded. I'm looking for something that I can possibly drive in the air. Want to lay off that sinker down because you don't want to roll over on that pitch. Has three pinch hit home runs, eight pinch hit RBIs. Six for 17 as a pinch hitter. He has more pinch hit RBIs than anybody in baseball. So this is the guy they want with the bases loaded and one out. Strike and it's nothing in one. Guerrero batting for Raven, which was a spot previously occupied by Puig. 
Outside, one and one. Kiaspo, the lead run, is at third base. Kike Hernandez is at second base. Jock Peterson is at first base. And the 1-1 one, one to Guerrero. One and two. Adrian Gonzalez on deck. Gonzalez has driven in a run today. Here comes the one two to Alex Guerrero. Foul back. Good job by Alex fighting that pitch off right there. Pitch before is the one where he, he was looking for to really try to get in the air and he fouled that one off. So now you're with two strikes. You're still thinking in your head, gosh, will I get one of those pitches up that I can still try to get in the air? Friday night, he drove in what turned out to be the game winning run. He can do it again here on this Sunday afternoon. That's what the Dodgers are certainly hoping for. One and two, bases loaded. Into right field. Kemp is there. He's got it. Kiaspo goes halfway. So as to not tempt the arm of Matt Kemp, who already threw out Kiaspo back in the third inning. Matt Kemp used a lower caliber gun right there also. He made sure he released it quickly and accurately. He didn't cut this one loose. Easy ball to charge, easy ball to read for Matt, right on a line right to him, and you can just see the effort. He just kind of eases it in there accurately to make sure that nothing goes wrong. Kiaspo would have been DOA. So now it's Adrian Gonzalez with a chance to give the Dodgers the lead. A double and two walks. The bases are loaded. Two out in the ninth. Inside, one ball, no strikes. They work the edges. Adrian will take a walk. But with the way the strike zone has been for him in this series, I think the bat will be leaving his shoulder. Into center field. It's going to be a base hit. Here comes Kiaspo. Here comes Hernandez. Throw to third, not in time. Adrian Gonzalez delivers, and the Dodgers take a 4-2 to two lead. Gonzalez has knocked in three of the four runs today. Oral, you talked about the strike zone, but at the same time, you also talk about Adrian Gonzalez, who just loves these situations, has so much confidence in himself that he can come through and get that base hit. That ball was in the upper strike zone, and he's still able to get on top, knowing himself, knowing his swing, knowing what he can handle, and gets a huge base hit. You see the bat speed that he used right there? It was just a nice, easy, smooth bat speed. He wasn't trying to launch it. He was just trying to hit the outfield grass. Dale Thayer has been knocked out. Nick Vincent is on his way in, and Adrian Gonzalez feeling pretty good about himself, and so are the Dodgers. Four to two. Two on, two out, two in in the top half of the 12th.
six, but he has knocked in three of the four runs with this big two-run double in the 12. Even though he's slumping, he's still clutch. You can see from that angle the ball up on the top of the zone, but just a short, quick swing to the ball. Just trying to get it out there, recognizing the situation, knowing he doesn't need a home run. He doesn't need to really drive it all in the gap. He just needs to find some outfield grass, and that's exactly what the ball did. First and third, two out. And now Howie Kendrick, Dodgers 4-2. to two. Kendrick fouls it back, and it's nothing and one. Nick Vincent making his eighth appearance. All that's left in the uh, San Diego bullpen is Brandon Maurer, and he pitched last night. And the Dodgers have their big fella Kenley Jansen warm and ready to pitch the bottom of the 12. Mentioned earlier in the broadcast the Dodgers have walked more team uh, more than any other team in the National League. Today they have walked three four five six seven times. And two of those walks have resulted in runs. Including the Kike Hernandez walk in the 12th. First and third with two out. Fouled off, and it's two and two. Kendrick today is one for five. Four runs, ten hits for the Dodgers. Two runs, ten hits for San Diego. Two out, two in, bottom of the 12. Peterson at third. Gonzalez at first. And Kendrick strikes out to end the inning. But the Dodgers come up with two runs. Two hits. Two walks. Two left. We go to the bottom half. Of the 12th inning, and they lead the Padres four to two. And here comes Kenley Jansen. is Kenley Jansen and he is on to make his 11th appearance in search of his ninth save he's blown one save but the Dodgers won it for him anyway he has struck out 18 hasn't walked anybody in 10 innings so the Dodgers with two in the top half of the 12th can move three and a half up on San Francisco and six in front of San Diego if Jansen can nail it down. We're about four hours and ten minutes into this game. 
And Hervis Salarte, Justin Upton, and Matt Kemp will bat for the Padres here in the bottom half of the 12th inning. It took a while for Mattingly and the Dodgers to get to Kenley. There's a strike, and it's nothing in one. A terrific three game series this weekend down here in San Diego. Each game, great stories, great theater. And Solarte, one for three, two walks, nothing in two. Game one, Kenley got the save. Four up, three down. You might see him use a little different pitch selection here today. That day was mostly fastballs and cutters. We really didn't see the slider, but with a two run lead and second time he's seen the Padres in three days, he might break out the slider a little bit more. Fastball blows him away. First out of the 12. Love about Kenley Jansen this year. Even when he's getting 0 2 count, he's just challenging you still. I think we've seen in the past at times, he's like, okay, I know it's 0 2, I'm trying to be too fine with it, but he's trusting his ability, trusting his mechanics, and going right after him. Now Upton. Upton was robbed of the potential game winning hit. In the bottom of the ninth, with two out, Jock Peterson with a spectacular catch, crashing into the wall, which would send the game into extra innings. Upton, of course, with the home run off Granky last night, give the Padres a 2 1 win. Dodgers won on Friday night four to three. Two one run games and an extra inning game as Upton fouls it back. It's nothing in two. Dodgers this year in extra innings are two and two. The Padres four and two. This team has battled back. As they did in Friday night, this game. Down goes Upton, two out. And the Dodgers are down two to nothing into the seventh inning today. But a run in the seventh, a run in the eighth, and two in the twelfth. And now they're one out away from their 37th win. One of the things about a bullpen gate opening up, a manager and a pitching coach want to know who's coming out of that gate and how consistent is he? Well, Kenley Jansen. Can't be much more consistent. Six pitches, six strikes, attacking and looking for his ninth save. And if the Dodgers are able to pull this out, I mean, the bullpen really did a great job keeping him in this ball game and also that just absolutely amazing catch by Jock Peterson. Hal Hatcher, Libertor, Nicasio, Raven, and now Jansen, who has struck out 20 on the season in 10 and two thirds, and he hasn't walked anybody. Matt Kemp takes a strike and it's nothing in one. This weekend, the Dodgers have shown an enormous amount of grit and determination playing against the ropes a couple of times. Kemp will keep the game alive with a single in the left. Even if Kike gloves that one, I'm not sure he's going to throw Matt Kemp out. Going to be tough to get off the deck. And yeah, that is one of those that's tough. But at the in your mind before it's hit, you're going, okay. If I lay out, it's because there's two outs and the and the score's two nothing. You might take a chance. Mm -hmm. Yonder Alonso is five for six against Kenley Jansen. Well, they get five for seven. Kiaspo 
The Dodgers win in 12. Next stop, Texas. The Dodgers with two in the top half of the 12th have beaten the Padres by a score of 4-2. to two. The Dodgers improved their record to 37 and 26. They're 8 and 4 against the Padres, 4 and 2 here at Petco Park. For Jansen, his ninth save. For Raven, his second big league win. For the Dodgers, who've won 6 of 8, a three and a half game lead over the Giants. Now it's time to take a look at the Lexus plays of the game. We would not have gotten into extra innings had it not been for the spectacular catch by Jock Peterson in the bottom of the ninth. Crashing into the wall, robbing Upton and sending the game into overtime. And then 